The talk of Jefferson County, Straight Talk, AM 1400 KJFF, Festus Crystal City, Imperial DeSoto. I'm Tommy Sump alongside Eric Oberly. You can listen. Thank you for listening to this game on KJFF. You can also watch this game on KJF Web TV. Corey Johnson is our cameraman doing the work there and does a fantastic job. So Herculaneum will be set to uh, kick it away. Cole White is the kicker back to receive it for Grandview is number 22 is number 22 Dylan Mitchum and number 23 Cody Ramsey they are back to receive the kick and Herculaneum is set to kick it off as I mentioned Cole White so we are just seconds away from the kickoff Herculaneum moving from our left to our right Grandview coming from right to left the kick is away it is an end over end and it is right to cole white that's going to actually excuse me that's dylan mission bounces behind him he picks it up at the 10 yard line he is swarm he is going to be brought down and not much return there for grandview as the uh, ball got behind uh dylan mitchum and so that is where grandview will start their first offensive drive of the game at about the six yard line that was, he had that ball just out there free and clear dancing around back there i'm sure the coaches uh we're having a bit of a holding their breath watching that one take place. Yeah, the ball kind of bounced at his feet a little bit and got behind him. That's a situation where you, you want him to uh, move forward a little bit and take the kick. So the quarterback for Grandview is Tyler Billingsley. Four wide receivers out, one man in the backfield. That is Michael Wenzelberger. They hand off to Wenzelberger, running right tackle. Ball comes loose. It's on the ground. Herculaneum jumps on it, and I think... They're going to rule this a Herculaneum football. And uh, still no call from the umpire. Now it is. Herculaneum recovers the opening drive for a fumble. Not the way you want to start it out for Grandview, but uh, good way for Herculaneum. One of the keys to this whole thing is the Grandview offense really needed to stay on the field as much as possible to try to neutralize Billy Duncan and keep that defense fresh. That is definitely not the way he wanted to start this game. And, and that takes away from uh, getting the opening kickoff and uh, loses that first drive. And so you also put Herculaneum in great field position for their first drive of the game. Under center is Shaquan Brass in the backfield, Dustin Johnson and Josh Church. No wide receivers out. Ball's on the ground. They hand it off. Or did they hand it off? Ball went to the ground real quick. They fumbled the snap. And I believe Brass jumped back on it real quick. So Herculaneum did recover. Cover the ball at their own 10-yard line. I call it the 11, so it will be second and goal for the Black Hats from their own 11-yard line. They started from the 11 or the 10-yard line on this. They're showing it was first and goal on this play, on this drive. Did they recover that on the 9? Yeah, they, they recovered it inside the 10 at about the 9-yard line. Loss of two yards on that fumble there by Herculaneum. In the backfield, Dustin Johnson and Josh Church. No receivers out for the Black Hat. They send a man in motion. They hit it off up the middle to Johnson, and he'll pick up a couple. But he won't get much. Back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe. I expect to see a lot of Dustin Johnson out with Nico Brown and the other players out injured. He's he's really been their workhorse, and they're, he's really going to have to carry this team quite a bit tonight. Shaquan Brass heads to the sideline to get the play call, and he heads back out to the field. <coughs> Herculaneum will throw wide receivers out there. Tr Tristan Duncan is to the right. Tristan Byers to the left. Church and Johnson in the backfield. Brass under center. Hands it off to Johnson up the middle through a big hole. Got to be close. Yes, touchdown. Dustin Johnson. He punches it in from seven yards out. And after the fumble on the opening drive, opening play by Grandview, Johnson punches it in, and they take the lead very quickly. Go right back to Dustin Johnson, right up the middle of the field. He just put his shoulder pads down and just barreled straight ahead. There was nothing fancy there, just power football. So Johnson in from seven yards out. On to kick the extra point is Haseen Ali. The snap is a little high. The hold is down. The kick is good right down the middle, and Herculaneum goes up 7 to nothing. We take a quick timeout. We'll be back in a minute. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. 
whether you're looking for a windshield wiper motor or a disc brake rotor, you'll find it, along with 800,000 other top quality automotive products at BNA CarQuest in Hillsboro. From pasture to car and light truck, import or domestic, heavy duty, fleet and farm, marine, ATV, industrial and more, CarQuest supplies top quality parts that you can depend on. Hi, I'm Dan Kennedy, owner of BNA. Just like it sounds, centrally located between highways B and A. We take pride in our hometown service, along with a selection that is second to none. Stop in the store or give us a call at 636-794-0900. That's 636-794-0900. Or shop 24-7 at CarQuest.com. We're always there to serve you. b and CarQuest, located next to the school in Hillsboro. Great people, great products, and great prices. That's CarQuest. The kickoff to Grandview is fielded by Mitchum again. And a little bit better return this, this time. Takes it up to the 20. He's going to be pushed backwards a little bit, and they will mark him at the 20, give him forward progress, and that is well Herculaneum. Or excuse me, Grandview will start their second drive of the game. But I'll tell you what, a great uh, way to start it for Herculaneum. And sometimes, you know, you have to be a little bit lucky. Oh, absolutely. I'm not, I'm not sure who caused that fumble, if he just coughed it up, but that is exactly what you want. It's homecoming night. That'll really get the kids started on the right track and headed the right way. So the Grandview offense heads back out onto the field. Four wide receivers out, one running back in the backfield. Tyler Billingsley is going to go into the shotgun for Grandview. He's going to hand it off, running right side with plenty of room to go. Gets around the corner. That's Wes Sullivan to the sideline, pushed out of bounds. A good run there by Wes Sullivan. And he's going to pick up about seven yards on the play. Last year, Wes Sullivan was a real strong player for him. Uh, their starting running back went down in about week seven, and Wes Sullivan stepped in, did a great job for Grandview. They were looking for big things from him this year. I don't know if he was maybe dinged up a little bit early in the season, but he looked like a pretty good, pretty strong run there. And now we get a whistle on the field. Took the uh, the marker to move a little bit. Oh, I see what the, what the problem was. Herculaneum didn't uh, bring the tee off the field, so the... Uh, back judge is going to uh, trot back and throw it off the field and now we're ready to go second and four coming up here for Grandview from their own 27 yard line second and four from the shotgun and it looks like Billingsley will take it himself and he's going to go right side he'll pick up a couple still probably a little bit shy the first down but uh, Grandview moving the ball pretty well here in their second drive it helps when you hold on to the football. Absolutely. Taking care of that ball on offense is so important. They gave him the first down on that. He got a really good spot there on the read option play. And this is exactly what Grandview needs to do to protect that defense. Keep the offense on the field. You don't have to worry about Dustin Johnson running. So the first down is good for Grandview, and they hand it off up the middle. The ball pops loose. It's on the ground again. But I think Grandview did recover this one. They did. I think it bounced right into... Rich Miller's arms. We'll have to put Rich Miller down for about a two-yard carry on that one. So a gain of two on the play for Grandview, and it's second and eight from their own 32. Billingsley in the shotgun. Going to drop back to pass. Going to throw it out to the left side, and he hits a man. That's Cody Vargo with room to run up to the 40, past the 40. A solo tackle, but a first down picked up there by Grandview. Good tackle made there by number five, Tristan Duncan. And Grandview moves the chains. That was a nice job of mixing it up. Prior to this, Cody Ramsey has been his primary target all year. And by changing it up and going to Vargo on that pass play, I don't think Herky expected that one. Another first down for Grandview. They have the ball at their own 44-yard line. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. They hand it off to the left side. That's Wes Sullivan with room to run, sweep around the sideline side into Herculaneum territory. And he's going to be close to the first down. Get a score update for you. Hillsboro leads Windsor 7 0. Nine minutes left in the first quarter there. And that is Hillsboro's homecoming as well. Lots of homecomings. It's about that time of the year around uh, football around the area. Second and two coming up for the Grandview Eagles from the 48 yard line. Snap back. Billingsley going to take it himself, runs the read option, and Hill will take it himself up to the 45 yard line. And Grandview will pick up the first down again. Wes Sullivan, he's looking really good on these runs. He turned the corner very nicely on that last play. Couldn't quite get his shoulders turned up field to really lower the pads. But he got him nine, nine and a half. He had him real close to the first end. And then Tyler comes back and punches it through for two yards to put him up. 
on Hill. the first down marker. Billingsley in the shotgun, hands it off up the middle. That's Sullivan, and he's pushing forward. Good defense, a little bit better there by... And that's Dustin Johnson, the linebacker, who came up and make the stop. We do have a flag down on the plane. It looks like it's going to go against Grandview. So that was about the, a four-yard run that's going to go away real quick. They're asking him what he wants to do. Score update. Seckman trails Kirkwood 7 to nothing. That is in the first quarter there. Illegal block in the back. That will be on Grandview. That's going to back them up 10 yards. That's not a call you see very often going up the middle of the field on a run like yeah, that. Yeah, usually that's something on a kickoff or yeah. maybe a uh, around the outside in mm -hmm. space, but up the middle you don't see that very often. Bad penalty there by Grandview, and it's second and 19 Grandview from their own 46-yard line as that penalty pushes them back into their own territory. Send a man in motion. Sullivan in the pistol. Hands it off to Wes Sullivan. Right tackle. He is clotheslined and dropped. Did pick up a couple yards, but, man, there was a defensive line that might have been Eric Pennington or Gavin Richards. It was the man on the stop. And tell you what, Herculaneum has a very big offensive line. You look at a couple of those defensive linemen down there. There's some big boys down there. Yes, there are. And Wes Sullivan, he runs very up. He's straight up and down very much. He doesn't get that forward lean. He's susceptible to things like that when you're going up the middle like that with these big defensive linemen. Second and 16, Grandview. Four receivers out and one man in the backfield. That's Wenzelberger, and he hands it off to him with plenty of room. No, Billingsley going to take it himself. Fake me out. Now he gets to the outside, and he'll be brought down from behind. Treston Byers in on the stop for Herculaneum. He chased him down, and he's going to be close to the first, first down marker, and I believe he got it. It looks like they got he it. Did. He got a good spot on that one. That was a great move from the inside to the out. He just made everybody miss on the interior defense. We could be seeing the effects in the linebacking core right there of the two injured players. First and 10, Grandview on the Herculaneum 34. Call comes in from the sideline. Mike Ginge is the head coach of the Grandview Ingles. Eagles. David Church, the head coach for Herculaneum. There's a swing pass out to the outside. That's Cody Vargo, and he'll pick up a good pass and catch. That's the exact same play that they tried to run just a while ago for about a 15-yard gain. This time, Herculaneum was definitely ready for it. And... Christian Jackson was Christian Jack was out there waiting for that one. He was hawking him the whole way. Score update for you. DeSoto leads Union six to nothing. That is in the first quarter. Second and two for Grandview from the Herky 32. Snap is back. That's Winslerberger running left side. And he's going to get pushed and pushed back. A couple of guys in on the stop there. Sean Hudson was in on the tackle. They hit him and pushed him back. Gain showing some, trying to build some confidence back into Wetzelberg after that opening drive fumble. Giving the ball back. He picked up a couple yards. Well, he had both arms wrapped around at that time. From the Herculaneum 30-yard line, it's third and six Eagles. Three receivers to the right side now, one to the left. Billingsley going to drop back to pass, going to throw it deep, looking for Ramsey, and it's incomplete. Nice defense there. I believe that was Tristan Duncan on the pass breakup. He was all over him. Good great. defensive there by Herculaneum. Great defense. Grandview's not afraid to throw the ball. They've thrown it 73 times this year. It's kind of, it might be an indication, too, of some of the games they got down in, they got down early, and they had to go to the pass. But it looks like Grandview's not afraid to throw the ball. They have thrown 12 interceptions this year, though. So it will be fourth down here, and Grandview will go for it on fourth down and six to go from the Herculaneum 30-yard line. Too long for a field goal, too short for a punt. Three receivers to the right. Billingsley going to roll to his right, looking that way. He's got room to run. He's going to pull it down. He's going to take it himself. Picks up the first down, and a flag comes out, and it may be coming back. That's the same flag we saw the last time. I wonder if we're looking at another block in the back there. Holding. And we are going to get a holding on the Eagles, so that negates a very good run there by Tyler Billingsley. It was not originally a run just kind of a uh, roll out to the right, but three wide receivers over there. But Billingsley had plenty of open space, and he took himself. So there's that's a holding penalty on the Grandview Eagles. That will back them up 10 yards from the spot of the foul. But uh, it's actually it's only really going to back them up uh, about four yards from the line of scrimmage because right now they're at fourth and eight. It's 10 yards from the spot of the foul, so the uh, 
Holding penalty occurred past the first down marker. So fourth down and eight to go here for Grandview. Two to the right, two to the left. Now we get moving on the offensive line, and three flags come out. That's a false start on Grandview, and they continue going backwards. That is their third penalty on this drive alone. They're doing what they need to do by staying on the field and eating up that clock. That's exactly what this offense needs to do. But then they shoot, they shoot themselves in the foot three times. And they push themselves back far enough that they're going to bring out the putt team. So Cody Vargo is going to punt it away for Grandview. And Tristan Duncan is going to go back to receive the punt for the Black Cats. This is a very different looking punt formation. Actually, excuse me, that's the quarterback Tyler Billingsley back in the punt formation. And the punt is away. It's a pretty good one. High. And it will bounce at about the 19-yard line, but take a Herculaneum bounce, and it will settle at the 21-yard line. And that's where Herculaneum will take over after the Grandview punt. That was a very unusual-looking punt formation, but it seems to work for Grandview. They got him on the 21. That's not a bad place to try to start. You have to go 80 yards. So Shaquan Brass, the defensive end and quarterback for the Herculaneum Black Hats, will come back out on the field, try his lead, his offense. They are up 7 to nothing. are the Herculaneum Black Hats with 5.17 to go here in the first quarter. Two receivers to the left, two men in the backfield. Now they put a man in motion. That's Tristan Duncan. Brass is under center, and he's going to hand it off. That's Dustin Johnson. And he breaks the tackle, then gets brought down again. He'll pick up a couple yards. Decent run there by, excuse me, that was Josh Church, not uh, Justin Johnson. That was Josh Church there. Nice spin and a hard run. He had to work for those two yards. I'm looking at the way the defense is setting up here, and they seem content. Grammy seems content to play man-to-man, -man, and they've got a man out there all by himself on that split wide receiver out to the left. I wonder if Herculaneum will take a chance and see if they can't throw. They've only thrown 23 passes this year. See if they take a shot at it. 444 and counting here in the first quarter. Herculaneum. Trying to drive down and add to their 7-0 lead. Brass is under center. He drops back. Going to hand it off. That's Johnson running left side, and he's going to be dragged down from behind. I think he's even going to lose some yardage. That was a great job by the, defense, the defensive front on the right side by Grandview. They got deep in the backfield. Dustin Johnson had nowhere to go. Uh, got back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. And it will be third down and nine to go for the Herculaneum Black Cats. Get a couple of score updates for you. Hillsboro leads 14-0 on top of Windsor. Eight minutes left in the first quarter. And Festus leads North County 7-0. Farmington lead is uh, Trails Cape Central 6-0. Brass drop, drop back. Going to throw it out to the side. That's off of Duncan's chest and incomplete. Right into Tristan Duncan's shoulder pads. Right off of his, right off of the numbers and incomplete. That is a pretty dangerous pass. You've got to really fire that thing out into the flat like that, especially on a one-on-one. -on -one. You, he threw it at a good spot though. He, the, the defender didn't really have much of an opportunity to make a play. That is a dangerous pass. So Herculaneum goes four and out, and they will punt it away. Two men back to receive it for Grandview. Number twenty-one and number twenty-three, Cody Ramsey and Sam Smith. The punt is away. Kind of a sideways punt. They're going to let it bounce. Takes a, actually didn't really bounce much. And it was going to stop at the Herculaneum 48. So after the four and out for Herculaneum, uh, they're unable to punt it into Grandview territory. So good starting field position here for the Eagles. I was just talking about the possibility of them. They seen that man-to-man -man defense out of the secondary from Grandview if they take a shot at it. On that last pass play, Shaquan Brest was looking downfield. He wanted to go right across the middle. They just didn't have any place to go with that when he had to go into the flat. Kirkwood is leading second, 14 to nothing. Also scores from around the area. First and 10 Grandview from the Herculaneum 47. Send a man in motion. Billingsley takes the snap, hands it off to Winslowberger up the middle. Hit and push back. No gain on the play. Nice defensive stop there by Grandview. I believe Devin Foot in on the tackle. They just stood the offensive line up there and pushed him right back into that running back. Short gain on the play, and it will be second and nine, Grandview. Four receivers out, two on the left side. Wide side of the field, two to the right. Now they send a man in motion. That's Vargo. We'll move to the right side. They're going to hand it off to Winslowbringer up the middle, and he will Oh, he cut to the outside. That That's Vargo. 
How did Vargo end up with the ball? I missed something. It was a short side pitch. It was a read option there, and he a very, very late wow. pitch. From, he only threw it about two feet to him. He probably just handed it to him. I completely missed that. I, I thought Winslowbanger took it up the middle. That's a good uh, fake there by Grandview. Running so, that option to the short side of the field can be tricky like that. He was only about two or three feet away from him when he pitched the ball to him. Picks up the first down for Grandview. They are at the Herculaneum 34. Three receivers to the right side. They hand it off up the middle. This is Wes Sullivan. He is hit and pushed back. Sean Hudson in on the stop for the Black Cats. Grandview is having one heck of a time trying to move uh, Gavin Richards. He is a big kid, and they just can't get him anywhere. They can't do anything with him on the, right over the top of the ball. Second and 10, Her- Black Cats, excuse me, second and 10, Grandview Eagles from the Herculaneum 34. 222 remaining in the game. 7 0 is the lead for Herculaneum. Billingsley going to take it himself with room to run to the left side, cuts it out to the 30, cuts it trying to get to the sideline to the 25, drops his shoulder. He's brought down by Treston Byers, and he's going to be close to the first down. He picked up about eight there. He did a good job getting to the outside, making a couple of guys miss. Herculaneum had it read well, and they had a man in the backfield, but he couldn't quite make that open field tackle on Tyler. Under two minutes to play here. Grandview has the ball, trying to uh, tie this game up. Herculaneum with the 7-0 lead. Third and one, Grandview. And it off right side. That's Wes Sullivan, and he's going to get he was hit in the backfield, but I think he will pick up the first down. A good, strong run there by Sullivan. Shaquan Brass had that read option there, read perfectly. Step down in. Wes Sullivan did a good job of putting the shoulders forward to pick up the first down. Shaquan Brass did open field tackle. Great job there. First and 10, Grandview. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Bill, er, Billingsley in the shotgun. Wes Sullivan right behind him. This is more of the pistol formation. They're going to hand it off to Sullivan off the middle. Breaks through. He'll pick up a couple yards. Late pile on. And uh, he'll pick up a couple yards. They keep going back to that right side. It's been a very mixed bag of emotion for, for Grandview. Sometimes they just get stuffed in the backfield, and sometimes they find some yardage and pick up five or six. Second and five for Grandview from the 18 of Herculaneum. Under a minute to play. Billingsley going to take it himself, running left side, breaks through a tackle to the 15, past it, and he'll be up to about the 13-yard line should they give him forward progress, but I think he's going to be just shy of the first down. We shall see where they spot it, and the head referee says first down, so another first down for Grandview, moving the ball pretty well here on this drive. This is exactly what the Grandview offense needs to do, keep their defense on the sideline. And now we get a false start on the left tackle. That's Rich Miller. I think he forgot the snap count, and it's hard to hide when you're out there on the left side by yourself. Especially on the short side of the field. You're about eight feet away from the side, Judge. St. Vincent leads Crystal City 7 to nothing. That is the homecoming of Crystal City. We broadcast their homecoming parade this afternoon. Hope you're able to uh, tune into that one. A lot of teams celebrating their homecoming today. First and 15, Grandview, they hand it off. Actually, Billingsley going to take it himself. And Shaquan Brass read it perfectly. He wasn't faked out, and he got into the backfield and brought him down. That's going to be a loss. Loss of about two on the play for Grandview, and it's second and 17. Shaquan Brass is really stepping up on the defensive side of the ball. They have him stepping across and just reading what they're doing, trying to shut down that option. He seems to be assigned primarily to the quarterback in this play. That's going to do it for the first quarter. After one full quarter, 7-0 is the lead for Herculaneum over the Grandview Eagles here at homecoming at Herculaneum High School. We'll take a minute break. We'll be back with more of the second quarter. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Putting your family first. Hi, this is Calvin Dantley at the Jefferson County Family YMCA. We're looking for teens ages 12 to 17 to be a part of our Teen Leaders Club. They'll have the opportunity to interact with each other and have fun while discussing topics like goal setting, financial management, community service, and even dating and relationships, just to name a few. Contact me, Calvin Dantley, and find out more about the Teen Leaders Club at your local Jefferson County Family YMCA. 931-9622 or online at www.ymcasaintlouis.org. 
MMCT Construction Remodeling in Hillsboro provides high-quality home improvements as well as reconstruction from fire, water, and storm damage in Jefferson County and surrounding areas. Locally owned and operated, MMCT is committed to providing the highest standard of workmanship, which is backed by their superior customer service. So whether your home or business has sustained water or fire damage, or you're interested in remodeling, painting, or flooring, trust the reliable, friendly, compassionate professionals at MMCT. Give them a call at 636-797-4440 or visit them on the web at mmctinc.net. 797-4440. Start of the second quarter here at Herculaneum High School. I'm Tommy Self alongside Eric Oberly. Granby with the ball. They'll switch, switch fields. They will be moving from our left to our right now. Quick score update for you. Hillsborough leads Windsor 22 to nothing. Four minutes left in the first quarter there. Second down and 17 for Grandview from the 20-yard line. Two receivers to the right, two men in the backfield. They hand this one off. That's Vargo on the off right tackle. And he'll pick up a couple. Grandview's doing what they need to do. Unfortunately, they keep having these penalties to kill them. They've had two on this drive. They had three on the first drive. Right now, they're managing to maintain it. They've ever got to co- they have to overcome this last penalty. They're still about uh, 14 yards off for the first down. And this is really what they need to do, just these sustained drives and keep the clock running. Third and 14 from the 17-yard line for Grandview. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Billingsley in the shotgun, going to throw it over the middle, and it's hit, and it's in the end zone. Touchdown. What a pitch and catch. Cody Ramsey, great throw by Tyler Billingsley. Fit it right through a tiny window, and he hit Ramsey right in stride, and he just walked into the end zone. Great touchdown there by Herculaneum. Absolutely. He went right between three receivers. Cody Ramsey is his favorite receiver. Put it right on his numbers. There were two hands right there. He put it right between both ends. You could not throw that pass any better. And the run afterwards, Cody Ramsey just saw the daylight. He went right between the gap. I mean, he didn't even run it in the end zone. He just trotted in. That was, I mean, it was wide open, perfectly placed. Billingsley on to attempt the extra point for Grandview. The snap is down. The kick is up, and it is wide right. So Grandview misses the extra point. They get on the board, though. Seven to six, six to lead for the Herculaneum Black Hats. We'll take a minute timeout. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. The doctor is in. Board certified family practice physician, Dr. Kenneth Killian is now part of Mercy Clinic. As part of the Mercy Clinic, Dr. Killian belongs to a healthcare team that's thousands strong, linking you to experts everywhere you find Mercy. It's coordinated, responsive care that's all about you. For more information or to schedule an appointment with Dr. Killian, Call 636-933-9300. Learn more about Mercy or find a Mercy Clinic physician at mercy.net. Hi, I'm John Popel with Twin City Toyota. In August, Toyota had its biggest month in five years and is the top retail brand for the sixth straight month. Leading the pack is the number one selling car made in America, the Toyota Camry. Great new styling inside and out on the new 2014 Corolla and compact SUV RAV4 blow away the competition. Come in today to see why these new models are flying off dealer lots. That's Twin City Toyota in Herculaneum or TwinCityToyota.com. Eleven twenty-one remaining here in the second quarter. Grandview with the touchdown. They missed the extra point. A short uh, kickoff here and it looks like it's going to roll out of bounds. It will and so we'll get an illegal procedure penalty on Grandview. And so Herculaneum will get to decide if they want to have them re-kick it or just take it from the 35. I'll tell you what, we've seen a lot of that this year. The kicking game does seem to be down a little bit overall, with the exception of Festus and Travis Brawl. They're, they have a hard time finding kickers. But it looked like the coach was standing right down there. Tyler Billings had kicked it right at his coach. It was right where the coach wanted it. Unfortunately, <laughs> it went out of bounds. So Herculaneum is going to ask them to kick it again. They will mark off the five-yard penalty for a legal procedure. And Grandview will kick it again. 7-6 to six is the lead here for Herculaneum. 11-21 remaining here in the second quarter. Let's see if the coach has back down the line, sideline for this kick and give Tyler something to aim for. Back to receive the kick for Hills, or sorry, Herculaneum excuse me, is Tristan Byers and Tristan Duncan. Kirkwood all over Seckman. They lead 20. Kirkwood lead 21 to nothing with two minutes left in the first quarter. 
Grandview set to kick it off. They'll boot it away as Tyler Billingsley. That's going to go up the middle. It's going to be fielded by the up man. I believe that's Devin Foote. He's going to get a nice return up to the 40-yard line. The big man with the return. He was probably, <laughs> he was probably, he saw that coming right. Just like, I am never going to get this chance again. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that was a pretty good return. Nobody wanted to tackle him. Good for you, Devin. Bring, it, bring that ball back. It's homecoming. The crowd's cheering for you. Have a good time. Uh, Devin Foote, 5'10", 262-pound junior offensive lineman. Nice return there. All right, so Herculaneum gets the ball at their own 40-yard line. Good starting position off the return by the lineman, Devin Foote. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Brass will go under center. Johnson and De Church in the backfield. They hand it off to Johnson. He pushes forward and he'll dive. And a pickup of about two on the play for Justin Johnson. Dustin Johnson just lowered his shoulders. He got tripped up just a little bit there. Somebody got him on the ankle to try to start that tackle off. I wasn't sure who it was. If you can hold Dustin Johnson to three, you're doing a good job. Seven to six, the lead here for Herculaneum with 10.50 to go here in the first half. Been a pretty quick game, low scoring, just seven to six. Both teams been running the ball a lot. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Rass under center. Johnson, the low man in the backfield. They flip him to in the left with, with plenty of room to run. Cuts back to the inside at the 50, and he'll pick up the first down. A nice run there by Dustin Johnson. Lone man in the backfield and just a good flip. And that's such a simple play, but Herculaneum made it work. Very effective. His, his blocking by his receivers out in front of him were re with really good blocks. That's a dangerous block, too. It's so easy to get caught for a hold there. You're out there all by yourself. Dustin Johnson did a job cutting back inside around the block. Good job by him. They're going to ride Dustin Johnson as much as they can tonight. And you know, that's something that's that's very important and often overlooked is blocking ability of wide receivers. And it, it is so easy to get called for that hold out there. You're all by yourself, and you have to maintain that block for so long. Mm -hmm. First and 10, Grand, or excuse me, Herculaneum from Grandview Territory at their 48. We get a whistle before the snap here, and I believe we're going to get a delay of game on Herculaneum, and that is what the call is. So that will back up the Black Cats five yards. Back them back into their own territory again. St. Pius leads 14 to nothing. And Valley Catholic leads 7, 21 to nothing. This is the game that I was looking for. R7 has had some really big games, but I wanted to see what they could do against a perennial powerhouse like Valley Catholic. Are they in that league yet? They trail currently 21 to nothing. First and 15, Herculaneum after the... Delay of game penalty. He's Josh Church with room to run. Breaks through an ankle tackle up to the 40. Going to be shy of the first down, but a great run by Josh Church. And he takes it up. That's a good 10-yard, uh, maybe 12-yard run there by Josh Church. And that's that, important for him because, uh, you know, he's, he's spelling in for Billy Duncan and, and Nico Brown, but talking with uh, Coach David Cook, he's done a nice job. And so far, he's done a pretty nice job today. It's really important tonight with those guys out so that Herculean doesn't com become completely one-dimensional with Dustin Johnson they can throw a few more looks at this defense so not everybody is just keying on 32. Second and two coming up for Herculaneum from the Grandview 40-yard line. Flip it out to Justin Johnson in space. Breaks breaks a tackle, but he's not going to miss much. He shaked and baked Wes Sullivan. Left him in the dust. Nice cutback by Johnson there, but he's not going to get anything on the carry. Maybe a yard or two. That's just He, he made a couple of guys miss. Grandview's going to have to get two or three guys to him because what we found out watching Dustin Johnson run, one-on-one, -on -one, it's just not fair. That's not a fair fight against Dustin Johnson. You need two or three guys meeting at him every play. 8.50 and counting remaining here in the first half. Herculaneum with the ball trying to march down and add to their 7-6 to six lead. Two men in the backfield, two tight ends. Tristan Duncan on the right side and it looks like and Shaquan Brass is just going to take it himself and he will pick it up. So a first down there by Herculaneum after Shaquan Brass uh, just picked it up himself. Little quarterback sneak. You know, that's a good idea. Brass, he, he's a defensive. He's also a defensive end. That's his natural position. So he's very big body, very strong. You think, think uh, that's a pretty good weapon uh, for Herculaneum to have tonight, to have that big body quarterback. At six foot one and 200 pounds, that's a load coming through there on a quarterback sneak. First and 10, Herculaneum. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Johnson in the backfield. They flip it out to him to the left side, and he's going to pick up a couple. Good five-yard carry. Nice more blocking down the, down the sideline by wide receivers. 
Butler both, Bluff leads Northwest 7 and nothing. That is in the second quarter. Both, seem, both teams seem to be trying to do the same thing offensively. They want to control the clock, long, sustained drives, and keep their offense on the field. That way the defense is going to stay fresh. We had a timeout called here by Grandview. We will take it as well. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. The Medicine Shop, with locations in Festus and Peebly, is committed to providing the residents of Jefferson County with much more than just prescription refills, like free local delivery, automatic refills and reminders, diabetic and medical equipment, and the personal service that you deserve, just to name a few. That's the Medicine Shop Pharmacies, across from the post office in Festus and on Commercial Boulevard in Peebly, caring beyond prescription. Eight minutes remaining here in the first half. Herculaneum with the ball game. You just called the uh, timeout. Herculaneum leads it 7-6 to six with eight minutes remaining in the first half. And we want to thank our sponsors, Ruther Ford and Herculaneum, Bob Kister, trial lawyer, MMCT, Roy Burnside, Wells Fargo, B&A Car Quest of Hillsborough, and Junk in the Trunk Flea Market, located at 2479 Festus, Missouri. Second and five. For the Black Cats here with the ball at the Grandview 30. One receiver to each side. Tied into the left. Two men in the backfield. Handed off to Church up the middle. And he'll pick up one. Dylan Hires was able to get into the backfield and make the stop. This running offense, Grandview's not even playing with a deep safety. He has a lot of confidence in these cornerbacks to be able to cover the Herculaneum receivers. Gain of maybe a foot on the play. And it will be third and five coming up for the for the Black Cats. Seven to six to lead for Herculaneum. Seven thirty and counting remaining here in the first court, first half. Brass under center, two to the right, two to the left. Johnson, the lone man in the backfield. Church is in the slot to the left side. Brass dropping back to pass, going to throw it to the right, and it's off of the fingertips of Sean Hudson, right to him. Might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage and right off the fingertips of Sean Hudson. That's two passes by Shaquan Brass. He showed a nice arm, and both times the receivers probably should have brought both of those passes in. So that'll bring up fourth down and five to go. Herculaneum looks like we'll go for it. Brass on the sideline gets the play call and heads back out. With 20 seconds to go on the play clock, clock it, the game clock is stopped at 7-16. Ball at the 29-and-a-half-yard line of Grandview. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Johnson, the lone man in the backfield. Brass under center, takes the snap, flips it out to Johnson on the right side, cuts back to the middle, now cuts back to the right side, and I believe he picked up the first down. Nice cutting by Johnson. You know, David Cook, he said at the beginning of the year, Johnson is the most patient back he's ever seen, and right there to be able to make those cuts like that and pick up speed is just great ability and i think he did pick up the first they down. marked him short of the first down did they really yes wow. they did that was a fourth down play it's grandview's ball i thought he had it too i i thought he did too so grandview takes over on downs so first and 10 eagles coming up here with 709 remaining in the first half the eagles down by one trailing seven to six they scored a touchdown and missed the extra point earlier Sullivan will get the carry running right side. He's hit and he's pushed and pushed and pushed and he will finally go down. And the ball comes loose. Herculaneum's running the other direction with it. It's Cody, excuse me, it's uh, it's Christian Jackson. And I think that they are going to uh, let that run out, but I think they're going to rule him down. I think I heard the whistles and once the whistle blows, that play is dead. They probably, forward progress has been stopped for a while. It'd be hard to Giving that takeaway or that fumble is actually how it would be ruled. So they will rule, rule him uh, as far as progress was stopped. So no takeaway by Herculaneum. It's a gain of two for the Eagles. Either way, it was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like it was for a second. <laughs> second and eight, Grandview from their own 29-yard line. 6.53 and counting here in the first half. Grandview down 7-6. to six. They break the huddle. They'll have two receivers to the left. Excuse me, one receiver to the left, two to the right, two men in the backfield, Billingsley in the shotgun. Men to either side of him. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff to Sullivan. He'll take it himself up the middle. And a good gain of about four yards on the play. 
that left side. They're going. They're kept. They aren't going out on the outside anymore. Shaquan Brass has done a good job of shutting down the outside and contain. But they are running to the inside. And they are having some, some success with that. A couple of score updates for you. Hillsborough leads Windsor 29 to nothing. Ten minutes to go in the first half, and Saint Vincent leads Crystal City 19 to six. Now we get a timeout called by Grandview again. Grandview calls the timeout. We will take it as well. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Think you're ready for retirement? Get answers on topics like Social Security, the rising cost of health care, investing for retirement income, and 401k rollover options. The Festus Crystal City branch of Wells Fargo Advisors is hosting a workshop on Saturday, October 26th, and you won't want to miss it if you plan to retire soon. Enjoy a complimentary lunch and hear secret service tips on protecting yourself from identity theft. Reservations required at 636-931-1900. Don't miss this workshop. Wells Fargo Advisors, LLC, member SIPC. Back here at Herculaneum High School, I'm Tommy Self alongside Eric Overly. Six minutes remaining in the first half. Herculaneum leads 7-6 on top of the Grandview Eagles. Hey, we want to remind you that this game is brought to you by Mercy Hospital Jefferson, Twin City Toyota, McFarland Travel, Comtree, and YMCA of Jefferson County. We want to thank them, as always, for making high school football on KJFF possible every week. 6.03 remaining here in the first half. 7-6 the lead for Herculaneum. Grandview with the ball at their own 33 empty backfield billingsley we're going to roll to his left and he hits a wide open man on the far side that's cody vargo he picks up the first down and much more on the far sideline nice play there by the eagles that's about a 20 yard pass play he snuck right in between the cornerback and the safety help into that seam tyler billingsley hit him right in the numbers in between the two players great job there just shy of herculaneum territory is grandview at their own 47 yard line First and 10. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Pistol formation here. Billingsley and Wes Sullivan standing right behind him. They hand it off to Sullivan. Or excuse me, that is uh, excuse me, that is not Sullivan. That is uh, Wenzelberger. He goes up the middle but doesn't get much. Score update from North County. The Festus Tigers lead North County 14-7. to Very important conference game there in the MAFC Red. When I really looked at the stat sheet, it looked to me like Grandview was throwing out a necessity with the scores that they had. But watching them tonight, their passing offense is a much more integrated part of their offense than we've seen from the other high school teams around. They do throw the ball, and they're doing pretty well at throwing it. Second and eight, Grandview. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Pistol formation, Billingsley in the pistol. Sullivan right behind him. He's going to take it himself, cuts back to the inside, and he's not going to get anything. I think he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. They keep going directly at Shaquan Brass over on that right-hand side. He's doing a good job of shutting it down over there. St. Pius leads Cuba 22 to nothing. That is in the second quarter. I want to thank Stuart McMillan running the board back in our KJF studios and also Renee Brunaw and Kat Keerley doing the work back at the studios. Corey Johnson is on the camera for Web TV. And my partner tonight is Eric Overly. I missed it last week. I had to listen to the broadcast. <laughs> well, hey, at least I'm glad you listened. Shotgun here for Billingsley, <laughs> dropping back to pass, looking over the middle, and it might be intercepted. Uh, no, I think they're going to rule it down. <laughs> and and Treston Byers thought he had an interception, but they're going to rule that it bounced first. I think that's the right call. Yeah, it did bounce right in front of him, but he tried to sell it. He Pretty certainly credit. did. Certainly at least make it look like he caught it. So fourth down for Grandview. They have the ball right at the 50-yard line, and they are going to come on and punt it away. Tyler Billingsley will step back to boot it away, and Tristan Duncan back to receive it for Herculaneum. Snap back right at the chest, steps into it, boots it D, boots it away, and I think it's going to go out of bounds. It will bounce out of bounds, and where will they mark it? It's going like to be right at the Herculaneum 20. And so that's where the Black Hats will take over first and 10 from their own 20 year Six remaining to play. Herculaneum up 7-6. to six. I want to thank our sponsors, Plaza Tire Service and Festus, the Medicine Shop Pharmacy and Festus, the law offices of Roberts, Wooten, and Zimmer in Hillsborough, Farm Bureau agent Joe Reed in Festus, and the Lowry Law Firm in Hillsborough. Every week they are our sponsors here on KJFF. First and 10 Herculaneum from their own. Well, I... 
It looks like they've spotted this one at the 21 yard line, and that's where the Black Cats will take over first and 10. 406 remaining to play in the first half. Ricky up seven to six on top of Grandview. Brass under center. Gonna hand it off. I believe that's Johnson on the far side with plenty of room to run. Cuts to the sideline. He's gonna pick up the first down and more, depending on where they spot this. And they'll give him a very good spot. Picks up the first down and maybe three extra. Big run there. Grandview's really loaded up to try to pressure this run. They're putting eight guys in the box. They're playing in a 5-3, and they're putting their three uh, cornerbacks out on the receiver solo. Herculean is still doing a good job of getting that push from the offensive line and opening up some seams for Dustin Johnson and uh, Josh Church to run through. St. Pius leads 29 to nothing. On top of Cuba, first and 10, Herculaneum from their own 37. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Johnson, the lone man in the backfield. Fate to go to the right, goes up the middle to hand it to him. Didn't have a whole lot of room to run, but he got two yards out of it. And that, that right there, that just is a patient run by Dustin Johnson. A lot of times you see a run back just runs right into the back of the pile. Johnson waited, waited, didn't get much of a hold, but he went into it and got a couple yards out of it. Normal situation, you're running back, he's down. He ran right into the back of his tackler or his guard. That, just being patient, and that little spin move at the back, he still picks up two, keeps that for, forward momentum going. 28 to nothing, Kirkwood leads Seckman in the second quarter. Second and second. Up here for Herculaneum. One receiver out. Two men in the backfield. They hand it off to Joshua Church this time. He's up the middle, and he'll pick up a nice run. I think he's going to pick up the first down as well, up to the 48-yard line. They're going to spot it right at the first down marker. And the uh, side judge on the far side there, he's going to try and figure this out if they picked up the first down, and they're going to rule that he is just short right at the Herculaneum 42-yard line. Grandview's putting their eight in the box, but Herculaneum just seems to be sending a message. Put your eight in the box. We're still going to run against you. He's, he's showing a lot of confidence in that offensive line tonight. Well, and, and they have, Herculaneum has a definitive size difference on the front line. True. Third and inches. Brass is going to take it himself. Sneaks to the left side. A huge hole. He even gets he had a big hole to run. He picked up five yards. That's the most yardage I've ever seen on a quarterback sneak. The uh, And that's just the size difference there for Herculaneum. I mean, just got a great push and a huge hole for Brass. He got the two yards that he needed for the first down, and then he just took a stutter step, dropped his shoulder, and just powered for three more. So that will take it into Grandview territory at the Eagle 47. 2.15 remaining and counting here in the second half, excuse me, in the second quarter. Herculaneum leads it 7-6. See if Herculaneum tries to pick it up a little bit here, try to put a few more points on the board before halftime. Two minutes remaining. Brass is going to hand it off, and it's bobbled by Hudson, and he picks it up. Now he bobs it, bobbles it again on the ground, still on the ground, and Grandview jumps on it. And Grandview jumps on it. Number five, Jeff Gore jumps on the uh, ball. Sean Hudson had it, and he dropped it, and he had it, and he dropped it. That's a ball that he actually fumbled twice there. That was one of the most exciting double fumbles I've ever seen. About six different people ended up touching that ball. I'm sure the coach is talking to him right now. You just follow on that. Yeah, it, it bounced off of his chest and ran down to the ground, and it bounced actually by, right up and right back into his chest. It, it bounced up to him, so he picked it up and kept running, but I don't think he ever quite had a good handle on the football, and, and the same thing happened again, and Grandview jumped on it, and they get the football in Herculaneum territory at the 47 with 151 to go in the first half, down 76. Now Grandview puts the ball on the ground. A flag comes out. As Wes Sullivan jumps on his own fumble, but a flag comes out here from the uh, from the back judge, and it's going to be a hold on Grandview. So that that's even worse. Not only do you lose a yard on the fumble, but you lose ten more on the holding penalty. We need to break out the stick of the night. They seem to be having a heck of a time holding on to the ball. So that will back them up ten yards back to the into Grandview territory at their own 41-yard line, and they need to get to the Herculaneum 38. That's going to make it much more difficult with a minute and 40 left to put some points on the board. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Billingsley in the shotgun. Sullivan to his left. Snap his back, handed off to Sullivan with big room to run on the right side. He'll pick up about four yards on the play, but still well shy of the first down. That'll bring up second down. <clears throat> there was a gap there for a small time. 
He stepped into that gap, and Devin Foote just closed that gap down on and drug him down. Union comes from behind. They lead 24-6 on top of DeSoto at the end of the first quarter. And Oakville leads Fox 12-6. That is in the second quarter. Second and 18 coming up for Grandview from their own 45. Two to the right, two to the left, under a minute to play. Grandview down 7-6, to six, throw to the left side, into the flat, and it's caught. Caught there by Dylan Mitchum. Ball comes loose, and he continues to move, and now the ball comes loose again. I think Herculaneum is on top of it, and they do another fumble by Grandview, and Herculaneum recovers. A double fumble again, and now it's right back to Herculaneum. And you know the Grandview coach is over there just screaming, get out of bounds, get out of bounds. Well, it's been a back-and-forth game, not by the score, just by uh, turnovers and stuff. 39 seconds remaining here in the first half. Herculaneum will get the ball back, leading 7-6, to six, 39 seconds remaining. Two double fumbles in a minute and a half. I don't think I've ever seen that before. First and 10, Herculaneum. And now we get a whistle from the far sideline. That's Grandview. And I think we're going to get a timeout. It's going to be called by Grandview. We'll take a 30-second timeout. We'll be back with more football on the other side of this break. 7-6 to six is the lead for Herculaneum. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Since 1974, ComTree has helped people suffering from alcohol and other drug abuse. ComTree remains committed to its mission to be an innovative, effective, and responsive community mental health center for Jefferson County. At ComTree, they believe in the importance of addressing issues of concern through direct patient care prevention and educational efforts. Professional care is available to you at ComTree with adult and adolescent programs, inpatient care, and three outpatient and aftercare locations. Call 931-2700. Herculaneum gets the ball with 39 seconds remaining in the first half. I'm Tommy Self alongside Eric Oberly. Get a couple score updates for you. Hillsborough on top of Windsor, 41 to nothing. Five minutes left in the second quarter. And St. Genevieve leads Perryville, 34 to nothing. First and 10, Herculaneum here. Ball at their own 34-yard line, 39 seconds remaining. Maybe you see them throw out a deep pass play act. Haven't tried many of them. Shaquan Brass, the backup quarterback. Jake Lambert, normally the starter, not dressed for this game. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. First and ten. Brass dropping back to pass, looking left. Flag out on the play. Throws over the middle, and it's incomplete. A sliding attempt by Tristan Byers. And we get a flag out on the play. Stops the clock at 34 seconds. Does the incomplete pass. We're going to get a hold on Herculaneum, so that's going to back them up 10 yard lines. Cody Ramsey was doing a really good job of sitting back in that. Or excuse me, uh, Cody Vargo. He read that play well. He had very good coverage there. That was, the coverage was good across the board by Grandview on that play. Shaquan Brass didn't really have any place to go. So that will back Herculaneum up. A little more than 10 yards. Going to back him up 12. Remember, holding is a spot foul. So it's going to be first and 22 Herculaneum from their own 23. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Brass looking over to the right side. Got a man Ocean. That's Hudson, but he overthrew him. Good arm strength by Brass, but he overthrew Hudson by about five yards. Very nice spiral. About a 45-yard pass, but he put it over the top. That what stops the clock with 27 seconds left in the first half. 7 to 6 lead for Herky. They were going for it all there. Coverage was still good by the Eagles secondary on that one, too. They closed the gap on that well. 37 to nothing, Pius on top of Cuba. Five minutes left in the second quarter. Second and 22, Herculaneum. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Dustin Johnson in the backfield. Shaquan Brass will go under center. Long snap count. Now they drop it back, looking to the left side. Steps up into the pocket, going to run it himself, and he's not going to get much, maybe two yards on the play. Dylan Heyer stepped in on a much bigger Shaquan Brass and really leveled him on that play. That was a good hit. Dylan Heyer is just not a uh, big guy. Remember, he played wide receiver and defensive back last year. Tried to bulk up as much as he could in the offseason, but uh, still not a very big guy. And that's going to do it. 
for the first half here from Herculaneum High School. Just a, uh, a very short short uh, score. Not much going on here in the first half. Herculaneum leads it 7-6 to six as we go into the locker rooms. We'll take a quick timeout, and we'll be back uh, after this. Uh, Eric and I will break this down. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Start the second half here at Hill at Herculaneum High School. I'm Tommy Self alongside Eric Overly. Seven to six is the lead for the Herculaneum Black Cats, and they will get the ball to start off the second half. Here I'm Tommy Self alongside Eric Overly. Uh, Eric, what do you expect to see here in the second half? Or at least what are you, you thinking? Maybe adjustments were made. I don't see a whole lot of adjustments in their philosophy. They're doing the right thing. They need to clean up the unnecessary penalties that they're hurting themselves with. The main thing that both teams really need to do is break out the stick them and stop humbling the football and hang on to it. Better take better care of that football. There is the kickoff that is fielded at the 20 by Tristan Byers. He's going to run to the right side, and he's going to be put down at the 30-yard line, so not much of a return for uh, Herculaneum. I'll tell you what it looked like. Devin Foote wanted to pick that up, didn't he? <laughs> He had his moment of glory. He he's wanted like, it again oh, in the man. second half. He's like, all right, that's right. Nah, I'll let him He in. thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> he's got their longest return of the night so he, far. Why he not? Does. He does. <laughs> all right, so it's first and 10 Herculaneum Black Hats from their own 30-yard line. And that is well they're started off here. Second, first and 10 as the Black Hats lead the Grandview Eagles 7-6 to six as we start the second half. One receiver out to the left. That's Tristan Duncan. Two men in the backfield. Two tight ends. Best brass under center. The ball's on the ground. Another fumble on the first drive of a half, but it looks like Lenny was able to recover. Brass just dove on top of it. Never made the exchange here. That could be, too, Shaquan Brass being the backup quarterback. He hasn't taken a lot of the snaps, and now he's yeah. going to take, take all of them tonight. Gain of uh, about six inches on the – or, excuse me, a loss of six inches, so it will be second and ten yards and six inches to go. Same formation here for Herculaneum. Brass under center. They're going to hand it off up the middle with Justin Johnson. Cuts through a big hole. He'll jump step over a defensive back, and it's at the 50 into Grandview territory down the sideline. He'll get pulled out of bounds at the 15-yard line. What a run by Dustin Johnson from the 30-yard line down to about the 15. A huge run for Dustin Johnson, and all of a sudden Herculaneum is ready to score. That was an incredible run. He did, he made two guys miss. When they hit the ground, he just hurtled over both of them and just took off, turned the corner, and that was a great track down by the pursuit coming. That's where that free safety is really going to help you out. They really had to track him down quickly. A 55-yard run on the play by Dustin Johnson takes it up to the Grandview 15, where Herculaneum will get it first and 10. 11-10 to go. Her Herky up 7-6. Same formation here. Brass under center, handed off to Josh Church, leaps over a defender, falls forward, and he'll pick up about a yard on the play. Dustin Johnson hurled two guys on the last run. I figured Josh Church would give it a shot, too. Tell you what, that was a Dustin Johnson run. I mean, he made some guys miss. He leaped over a defender, broke a tackle, and just absolutely took off down the sideline. You almost had to see it. They had eight men in the box, so there were those gaps there on the outside. You knew it was just a matter of time before Dustin really got a good runoff. I don't think anybody was looking for the 55-yarder, but he really turned the corner well on that. 10.38 to go here in the third quarter. 7-6 the lead for Herculaneum. Same formation, but the receiver to the right side now. Johnson is going to take it himself to the left side, behind the block, into the end zone. Easy touchdown by Dustin Johnson. Just followed his blocker to the left side, and he takes it easily into the end zone from 15 yards out, and Herculaneum adds to their lead. There's a Grandview Eagle there that was slow to get up, and he's limping around. That is number five, Jeff Gore for Grandview. So far, I think we have to give the uh, halftime speech to the coach from Hills or from Herculaneum, Dave Cook. He seems to have his team, his offense, fired up to come out in the second half. That run there was just like the run the last time we broadcast Herculaneum. He put his hand up on his on his blockers, the pulling guards back, and just followed him through. When the hole opened up and the time was right, he just took off around him. Absolutely. Extra point is good, and Herculaneum goes up 14-6. to six. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. 
Hi, this is Melody with the Lowry Law Firm. If you're facing criminal charges or suffering from devastating injuries, call our law office in Hillsboro or Festus. Since 1997, we have offered professional, service-oriented representation in Jefferson and surrounding counties. Our goal at the Lowry Law Firm is to put your mind at ease and, most importantly, achieve solid results. We are the Lowry Law Firm in Festus and Hillsboro. Look us up on the web at thelowrylawfirm.com. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision. It should not be based solely upon advertisements. Where you always get the sweet deal. Hi, it's Doug Ruther. It's Truck Month at Ruther Ford, and we have the sweetest deals on both work and family vehicles. Right now, during Truck Month, get a new 2013 Ford F-150 4x4 from $25,495. Or how about the perfect utility vehicle, the new 2013 Ford Transit for $21,995. Where you always get the sweet deal. Ruther Ford. Ruther.com. Now let's talk new Fords for the family, like a new 2013 Ford Flex with leather interior and loaded with options for less than $31,000. Or if you're looking for fuel economy at its best and the best price around, drive away in a new Ford Fiesta for $13,995. Remember, at Ruther Ford, we trade for anything as long as it doesn't need or breathe. We're Ruther Ford, right here at the Auto Mall, I-55, Herculaneum Exit. Where you always get a sweet deal. Rick Delanium kicks it off and is returned by Grandview to the 35-yard line, and that is where the Eagles will get it, first and 10 from their own 35. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, two men in the backfield. Billingsley hands it off to Sullivan on the sweep around the left side. He's going to be hit and brought down. Loss of about five on the play. That looked like it might have been a face match, the way his neck jerked around. He either got him on that horse collar tackle by the shoulder pad or something. He, that was very odd. He'll feel that one tomorrow. Gain of five on the play for Grandview, and it's second and five for the Eagles. 9.54 remaining in the first half and counting. 14-6 to six the lead for Herkey. Same formation here. They hand it off up the middle to Wenzelberger. He is hit immediately in the backfield, and he'll be pushed back. Loss of a couple yards. Devin Foote, their big return man, and stuffing up the middle right there. So Winslowberger on the carry, loss of a minute. Third and five. And off is to Billings. He's going to flip it out to the left side. Ball's on the ground, and I think they're going to get a lucky break and let it roll out of bounds. That pitch came out very odd. Once again, they're having trouble holding on to that football. He never got the pitch right. That just came out. It looked like it slipped out of his hand. So that's going to bring up fourth down for Grandview. And that's going to back them up about four yards. So loss of four on the play, fourth and nine coming up for Grandview. Three receivers, excuse me, two receivers. They're going to bring out the punt team. They're going to boot it away. That trusted buyer is going to all let it bounce. They'll pick it up, and he's not going to go anywhere. And he will be dropped at about the 26-yard line where it will be first and 10. Herculaneum will take over after the Grandview punt. Grandview special teams have been doing a good job on the coverage. They had five guys down there, no place for him to go. Just swarmed him and tackled him on that one. 9.03 remaining in the third quarter, a 14-6 lead for the Herculaneum Black Hats. They start this drive at their own 29-yard line. See if Herculaneum can keep that momentum going and being fired up in that first half in that big run. Tristan Duncan will be split out wide to the left side. It looks like he's going to be the only man split out. Now we get a timeout called by Herculaneum. Interesting call there. We'll talk about that. We'll take a quick 30-second timeout. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Hi, this is David McFarland. At McFarland Travel, we are a full-service travel agency specializing in one-on-one -on -one service. We discuss your needs and desires, do our research, and provide you with options all within parameters that you have set. When you book online, you do all the work and then give your hard-earned money to someone you will never meet and without fully knowing what your options are. Shop locally and book safely with McFarland Travel at 206 Main Street in Festus or call us at 937-5679 or toll-free 888-440-5679. Eight fifty-six remaining to play here in the third quarter between Herculaneum and Grandview. I'm Tommy Self alongside Eric Overly. 
as the Black Hats of Herculaneum lead it 14 to 6. Quick score update for you: Union leads DeSoto 38 to 6, and that is at the half. Important right now for Coach Gaines to calm down to his young Grandview team, keep their keep them focused, and keep them in the game. They're, they aren't that far. It's only 14 to 6. They've done well tonight. If they eliminate a couple of penalties, they're right back in this game. And so Herculaneum will start it first and 10 from their own 29-yard. Uh, Interesting, they, they send them out there, and now the Herculaneum coaches, they're out on the field. David Cook, he's laughing a little bit, so I think it's all in, in good fun. But interesting, they come out for the play, they get set up, and then they call a timeout. Interesting move there by the Black Cats. So it's first and 10 Herculaneum from their own 29-yard line. They're going to hand it off to Josh Church. He's going to cut to the left side, gets all the way out to the outside, to the 40, to the 50. This is Dustin Johnson, excuse me, down the sideline and pushed out of bounds. Another huge run by Dustin Johnson. There was nobody on that side. And another big run by Dustin Johnson. I think Dustin Johnson found something he liked on that left side. He came right back to it. Maybe that's what they saw what they they saw what they needed to see. That's why they called that timeout. They saw that gap or something that they liked on this left side and they wanted to get the ball back in Dustin Johnson's hand. And he made Grandview pay for that one. 8.45 remaining here in the third quarter. 14-6 to six is the lead for Herculaneum on top of the Grandview Eagles. One receiver to the left, that's Tristan Duncan. Two men in the backfield, Johnson and Josh Church. They hand it off to Church this time. He is met in the backfield. He's going to keep going, though. Flag on the play. Nice continuation run by Josh Church. Was hit at the legs as soon as he got the ball. But he kept moving forward. He picked up about five yards on the play, but there is a flag out on the play. I think one of the offensive linemen from Herky had the first tackle on that play. Holding on Herculaneum, so that's going to negate a good run by Josh Church and will back them up 10 yards from the spot of the foul. That's not what they wanted to do. That's what they did in the first half with the untimely penalties. You have a 50-yard run by Dustin Johnson, and then you come back with a holding penalty on the next play. That, that'll take that momentum out. That could be where that speed's coming in from Grandview. He just got past the, the offensive lineman on that one. He had no choice but to take him down. So first down and 21 to go for Herculaneum. Ball at the Grandview 31. And it is first and 10, Hercul first and 21 Black Cats. Long way to go here. They're in Grandview territory. They flip it out to the right side. Good block. They continue to run around the right side. Cuts back to the middle. A great run there by Billy Duncan. I thought he was injured. I thought Billy Duncan was out for the season. But he comes in and takes a huge run. That's a big pickup. That's a 10-yard uh, pickup. That's a 12-yard pickup, excuse me, by Billy Duncan. I thought Billy Duncan was out for the season. I didn't even put him on my stat sheet. I thought he was injured, too. And he comes out and just he shows up in the second half and peels off a 12, 14-yard run. Interesting. That's something we'll have to ask Coach Cook after the game. I'll be listening to the post-game interview today. Second and nine, Herculaneum. Two men in the backfield, one receiver out. Handed off to Duncan again, out of the backfield, up the middle. A big pickup there by Billy Duncan. Well, unless I've got somebody in Billy Duncan's jersey... He shows up in the second half, two runs, 26 yards. There you go. Grandview calls the timeout. We'll be back in 30 seconds. As we'll take a timeout with Grandview back in 30 seconds. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. The law office of Bob Kister, trial lawyer, LLC, and Herculaneum will work hard for you. With 30 years of experience in personal injury and workers' compensation, including auto, motorcycle, truck accidents, premises liability, medical malpractice, defective product injury claims, and Social Security disability claims, the law office of Bob Kister is dedicated and committed to the success of your case. When you need an experienced attorney and someone who will work hard for you, call trial attorney Bob Kister on McNutt Road in Herculaneum, 636-931-4459. Seven twenty-two remaining here in the third quarter. 14-6 is the lead for Herculaneum. I'm Tommy Self alongside Eric Oberly. Stuart McBillan is back in our KJF studios. Kat Kearley and Renee Bernard doing all the work back in our KJF studios. Corey Johnson is on the camera for KJF Web TV. Don't forget you can watch this game 
online at mymoinfo.com. Just go to KJFF Web TV. I want to thank our sponsors, Ruther Ford and Herculaneum, Bob Kisser, trial lawyer in Herculaneum, MMCT in Hillsboro, and Roy Burnside of Wells Fargo in Festus. First and goal, Herculaneum from inside the 10-yard line. They're going to fake the hand up, and it's now it's handed off to Johnson, fights through a tackler, and he's still going to lose a, a couple yards. That could have been a five-yard loss, but Johnson was clothesline but kept going. It's a good thing about being short. <laughs> you have to get by the low to really wrap him up. He had him by the head and just couldn't bring him down. He just shook his head, threw him off, and then still got two yards. Now, I was actually incorrect. That was Josh Church on the carry. Dustin Johnson is coming in right now. So uh, at the timeout, they brought Johnson off for one play, get him a little extra breather. Surprised they didn't go back to the injured Billy Duncan for a third run in a row. I, I, I am, I'm just confused. We will talk about that after the game. <laughs> Tied into the left. Two receivers in the backfield. They flip it out to Dustin Johnson. Cuts back into the inside. He's going to be tackled by three, four players. A late flag. A late guy comes in, makes a hit, and a flag down on the play by the uh, head referee. And we might get a personal foul on Sportsman like a late hit there for Grandview. Yep. That's what it is, a late hit, a blow to the head there by Grandview. So that's going to be a 15-yard penalty. This time we're seeing the untimely penalty on the defensive side of the ball, and that's really what they don't need to do right now, down 14-6, to six, is just help Dustin Johnson and the Black Cats out by getting them a 15-yarder. 6.26 to go here in the third quarter. 14-6 to six is the lead for the Herculaneum Black Cats. Billy Duncan still in the game right next to Dustin Johnson. Surprise, surprise, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> you like that little reference there? <laughs> I actually got that reference. I'm old enough for that one. <laughs> we'll see how many people out in, that are listening to that. <laughs> two receivers, two men in the backfield. Now they shift a man to the left side. Here's Dustin Johnson. Cuts back to the inside. Touchdown. Nice run by Dustin Johnson. Not even touched. Little sweep to the left side, then cut back, and a great cut by Justin Johnson. A six-yard carry and another touchdown for Herculaneum. Give a lot of credit to the offensive line and his wide receivers on the left side there for getting on those blocks and maintaining those blocks for a long time. Justin Johnson's going to the left. He sees an opening, a small gap back to his right, and just cuts it right back and walks into the end zone. Well, I thought he made that look pretty easy. Now a late uh, man coming in for Herculaneum didn't have all the guys on the field. Now they're ready. The hold is down. The kick is up, and it is good. And Herculaneum goes up 21 to six with 6:21 to go. We'll take a minute timeout. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Hi everybody. I'm Dan. I'm Clay from Missouri Farm Bureau Insurance. I'm a customer, and my agent is the best. I'm a customer too, and my agent can beat up your agent. We have the same agent, Clay. That's why he's undefeated. For the best agents, call Missouri Farm Bureau Insurance. They can't be beat. You don't have to be a farmer to save money with Farm Bureau. Contact me, Agent Joe Reed and Festus, for a free quote. 636-931-1112 or just across from Mercy Hospital Jefferson. Hi, I'm John Popel with Twin City Toyota. In August, Toyota had its biggest month in five years and is the top retail brand for the sixth straight month. Leading the pack is the number one selling car made in America, the Toyota Camry. Great new styling inside and out on the new 2014 Corolla and compact SUV RAV4 blow away the competition. Come in today to see why these new models are flying off dealer lots. That's Twin City Toyota in Herculaneum or TwinCityToyota.com. is picked up by Randy. That is number two, Cody Vargo, who runs to the left side. He is going to be sworn by the Herculaneum Black Hats. Very little return, if any, there by Her Grandview. And so they will start with the ball at their own 20-yard line, first and 10. Cody ran a good 30 yards there to pick up three. I'm sure the coach puts him going north and south, not across the field like that. So it will be first and 10, Grandview, starting from their own 23-yard line. First and 10, Grandview Eagles. Two men in the backfield, the shotgun for Tyler Billingsley. Hands it off to Sullivan, running left side with room to run. Gets the first down and more. And I think you need, there's a face mask penalty on that. I didn't see a flag thrown. 
Boy, I thought they, um, I think they missed a pretty obvious face mask there. Either the face they mask or the horse way. collar tackle, which either one, it's illegal. He got taken down very odd on that play. So it, a first down pickup by Wes Sullivan. And Grandview moves the ball up to their own 41-yard line. First and 10, one receiver, excuse me, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Billingsley in the shotgun. Sullivan and Wenzelberger back next to him. Handed off to Wenzelberger, running the sweep, left side, hits the hole. Now he breaks through a tackle up to the 50-yard line. A good strong run there by Wenzelberger. Just bounced off a would-be tackler. Took it to the outside. Good nine-yard run there by Wenzelberger. One of the Black Cats met him in the backfield and just flew at him. And he just bounced off that hit and picked up nine. Good pick up there by Wenzelberger. And it is second and nine. Grandview right at the 50-yard line. Two to the left, one to the right. Two men in the backfield. Billingsley going to take it himself to the left side around the outside. Picks up the first down and more. The front line up to the 36. A good pick up there by Tyler Billingsley, and he, pick, he moves the chains. Picked his way through a lot of would-be tacklers there. They've seemed to have found a home on the left side here on this drive. That's the third consecutive drive up the left-hand side. Picks up the first down, first and 10 Grandview from the Herculaneum 37. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Billingsley in the shotgun, Sullivan the lone man back with him. Billingsley going to take it himself, try to cut to the outside. No, goes back to the middle, and Sean Hudson meets him in the backfield and drops him for a loss of yards. 43-6 to six is the lead for St. Pius. That is in the third quarter. The Lancers lead Cuba 43-6. That's exactly how you coach your kids to break up a read option. Three of you go into the backfield and just start tackling people. A generous spot on the play. They did say he got back to the line of scrimmage, so it's second and ten. Three tight to the left, one to the right. Billingsley in the gun, Sullivan to his right. On his hip pocket, the handed to Sullivan with room to run the left side. Cuts back in. Hudson meets him in the backfield, and that is going to be dropped for a loss. Sean Hudson having a nice second half here. Doing a deep. good job getting into the backfield as the outside linebacker. The defense seems to really be feeding off that energy. They, Herculean has really picked it up in the second half, Dustin Johnson. And Herculean, they're flying around. They've got guys in the backfield on every play. No Jim. huddle here for Grandview. They look over to the sideline for the play call. Billingsley feeds it around. Twins to the right, twins to the left. Twins. Billingsley in the gun, Sullivan to his left. Fake the handoff, dropping back to pass, looking over the middle. He's going to roll to his right, still looking at the throw. He does, and it's hit by Vargo. Hits at the 20 to the 15, cuts back to the inside to the 10. Uh, eludes a tackle by Treston Byers. He made him miss, and Dustin Johnson comes over and brought him down. But a pickup by Grandview, and it's in, they're inside the 10. That was nice sight. They're bearing down on him. He had to step out of the pocket, hit Cody Vargo right in the numbers. The run after it was really impressive. Two very nice jukes, one to the inside, one to the outside, to pick up an extra 10 after the catch. Poplar Bluff leads Northwest 21 to 7. That is in the third quarter. Scores from around the area. Barl is at the eight. Billingsley hands off to Sullivan, tries to cut back to the outside, and there is Sean Hudson again, dropping him for a loss. Tell you what, when we talked about coming into this game about how much they're going to miss Nico Brown. Tell you what, this second half, Sean Hudson has stepped up. He really has. It's been nice to see this young man step up and really pick up to where Nico Brown is missing. He has put together some really hard tackles. He doesn't look like a big player, but he can really put the boom on some guys on these tackles. Three to the left, one to the right. Lingsley in the gun, with Sullivan to his right. They're going to throw it out to the left side. It's almost picked off by Herculaneum. They were in the backfield so quick, they had a chance to pick it off, and they're going to rule that it's... Uh, I think they ruled this a lateral. Yeah, yeah, they did move that, rule that a live ball, so the ball was on the ground. So Grandview was going to lose some yardage here. They lost about seven on that. I think they ruled a backward pass on that. And guess who was right there again? Sean Hudson. So ball backs up to the Herculaneum 14, and that is in his first and, excuse me, third end goal, Grandview from the Herculaneum 14-yard line. Two to the right, two to the left. And now they're going to send Sullivan out. So three receivers to the right, empty backfield. 
Billingsley rolling to his right, going to throw, and he's looking for a man, and it's diving caught into the end zone. Cody Ramsey with a diving play into the end zone. His second touchdown into the game, and another beauty between Billingsley and Ramsey. That is his favorite target. That was a beautiful floater pass right over the defense. Diving catch. No wonder Cody Ramsey. If he can make catches like that, I'd throw him the ball too. Just toss in his direction. Let him do the work. Oh, that was a great catch by Cody Ramsey. And Billingsley put it where only Ramsey could get it, made a diving play, and he gets into the end zone. I'm impressed by the fact that Tyler could see him. There was a lot of defenders over there, and Cody is a short guy. He could he threw it right over the top. So a 21-12 lead here for Herculaneum. Grandview will go for two. They'll go same formation, empty backfield. Billingsley rolling to his right, looking right. Now he's going to pull it down and run it. Still going. Now he'll be brought down by Sean Hudson, shy of the goal line. And that is, so the two-point conversion is no good. 21-12 lead for Herculaneum here with 150 left in the third quarter. We'll take a minute timeout. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Everyone's talking about Junk in the Trunk Flea Market on Highway 67 south of Festus. Friday is garage sale day and spaces are just $10. Every Saturday and Sunday beginning at 7 a.m., there are acres and acres of flea market items. Vendor spaces are just $15. And the pumpkin patch now open, so bring the kids. They'll just love it. And bring your appetite for great food like burgers, kettle corn, and more. Call Junk in the Trunk Flea Market at 636-209-3811. That's 209-3811 for Junk in the Trunk Flea Market, Highway 67 south of Putting your family first. Hi, this is Calvin Dantley at the Jefferson County Family YMCA. We're looking for teens ages 12 to 17 to be a part of our Teen Leaders Club. They'll have the opportunity to interact with each other and have fun while discussing topics like goal setting, financial management, community service, and even dating and relationships, just to name a few. Contact me, Calvin Dantley, and find out more about the Teen Leaders Club at your local Jefferson County Family YMCA. 931-9622 or online at www.ymcastlouis.org. One fifty remaining here in the third quarter. Grandview gets up back on the board. They miss the extra point. 21-12. Here's the short kickoff. It will be fielded by Tristan Byers on the bounce. He's going to run up the middle at the 30. Cuts to the 35. Being chased. Breaks an arm tackle. And he's going to be brought down at the 36. And I think we're going to get a face mask penalty. The flag comes out from the side judge here. And uh, so we got to get a flag. That might be a, a face mask on Grandview. Herculaney was really trying to set up the wall over to this side, even though Grandview has been kicking to the left side. They had the wall set up very well. He just couldn't quite get there and get to the outside of that wall they had set up. Personal foul, face mask on Grandview. And so they're going to mark off. They Maybe they call that a... Are they gonna call, is that going to be a 15? Yeah, they're going to mark off 15 yards. So bad mistake there by Grandview. That is going to... Move the ball up to the 50-yard line where Herculaneum starts. I know that that was what that was one. That's the first good return by Herculaneum other than Devin Foot. This is true. <laughs> I have about 20 on that. Maybe the reason he didn't make it to the wall is because of the face mask. So ball right at the 50 for Herculaneum. They lead 21 to 12. 141 to go here in the third quarter. Brass under center hands it off. That is Duncan. No, that's that's Duncan on the right side, and he breaks into space at the 30. Cuts back to the middle, wide open at the 10. That's to the five, and he's going to be brought down there right at the five-yard line. A huge run by Billy Duncan, who we thought coming into this game was injured. How about that? <laughs> he cut it to the outside around everybody, cut it back to the inside. If I'm a football coach, I want Billy Duncan hurt playing for me every week. <laughs> tell you what. <laughs> He wasn't wearing that knee breast. He might have been able to break that for the last five yards and really punch that in. 21 to 12 is the lead here for Herculaneum. 80 seconds and counting here in the third quarter. Herculaneum up at the five-yard line of Grandview. They can smell the goal line again. They have come out on fire here in the second half. They shift a man to the left side. They hand it off up the middle. Cuts back to the inside. That's Church going to be just shy of the goal line. No, it's in. Touchdown. Josh Church, late call by the umpire, and Josh Church punches it in from five yards out, all set up by the huge run by Billy Duncan with a minute four to go. That was a good, hard run. He had people hanging all over him from about four yards out, just kept the leg turning and drove it into the end zone. Ali on to kick the extra point. The kick is up. 
And it is good. 28 to nothing is the lead for Herculaneum with a minute four to go. We take a minute timeout. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Whether you're looking for a windshield wiper motor or a disc brake rotor, you'll find it, along with 800,000 other top quality automotive products at BNA CarQuest in Hillsboro. From pasture to car and light truck, import or domestic, heavy duty, fleet and farm, marine, ATV, industrial and more, CarQuest supplies top quality parts that you can depend on. Hi, I'm Dan Kennedy, owner of BNA. Just like it sounds, centrally located between highways B and A. We take pride in our hometown service, along with a selection that is second to none. Stop in the store or give us a call at 636-794-0900. That's 636-794-0900. Or shop 24-7 at carquest.com. We're always there to serve you. B&A CarQuest, located next to the school in Hillsboro. Great people, great products, and great prices. That's CarQuest. Kickoff fielded at the 25-yard line by Grandview, and it will be returned by Keith Roy. Good 15-yard uh, pickup by Grandview, and that is where they will start with the ball at their own 35-yard line. 28-12 to 12 is the lead for the Herculaneum Black Cats on top of Grandview with 59 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Quick score update for you. Hillsborough leads Windsor 60 to nothing. Four minutes left in the third quarter. Tristan Byers had the outside contain on that kickoff, and he made a very nice open field tackle. Not to let him get to the outside on that and really crank out a lot more yardage. First and 10, Grandview from their own 35. 59 seconds left in the third. One receiver to the left, two to the right, two men in the backfield. They hand it off to Sullivan, running right side, hit, and brought down. That's going to be a, uh, that'll be a, uh, maybe a loss of one. Dallas Copeland, first time I've mentioned him, he is one of the substitutions, substitutions that is in uh, trying to make up for the loss of Nico Brown. And what we thought, Billy Duncan, uh, he's been in on running. He's been in running the ball, but uh, he is uh, he's also a linebacker. Well, after you know racking up nearly 100 yards on three runs, he probably needs oxygen. Could be, yeah, not out out there on offense. <laughs> two to the left, one to the right, two in the backfield. Billingsley in the shotgun, going to throw it out to the left side. That is Ramsey, cuts up the middle, and he's brought down by Sean Hudson in on the tackle. Also over there on the stop is. Number two, Christian Jackson. Pickup of about five on the play, and it's third and five, Grandview. That is the end of the third quarter. 28 to 12 is the lead for Herculaneum on top of Grandview. We'll take a minute break. We'll be back with the fourth quarter. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. MMCT Construction Remodeling in Hillsboro provides high-quality home improvements as well as reconstruction from fire, water, and storm damage in Jefferson County and surrounding areas. Locally owned and operated, MMCT is committed to providing the highest standard of workmanship, which is backed by their superior customer service. So whether your home or business has sustained water or fire damage or you're interested in remodeling, painting, or flooring, trust the reliable, friendly, compassionate professionals at MMCT. Give them a call at 636-797-4440 or visit them on the web at mmctinc.net, 797-4440. The doctor is in. Board certified family practice physician, Dr. Kenneth Killian is now part of Mercy Clinic. As part of the Mercy Clinic, Dr. Killian belongs to a healthcare team that's thousands strong, linking you to experts everywhere you find Mercy. It's coordinated, responsive care that's all about you. For more information or to schedule an appointment with Dr. Killian, call 636-933-9300. Learn more about Mercy or find a Mercy Clinic physician at mercy.net. Out of the fourth quarter here at Herculaneum High School. I'm Tommy Stuff alongside Eric Gobley. Want to thank Junk in the Trunk Flea Market, BNA Car Quest of Hillsboro, and Roy Burnside of Wells Fargo for sponsoring this broadcast tonight. Third and six to go here for Grandview from their own 41 yard line. Handed off to Sullivan. Flag on the play, running the sweep to the 45, pushed out of bounds. Piked up the first down, but there is a flag on the play. And Flag on the play right at the snap. That's usually, you might think, an offsides. Oh, it's going to be an illegal shift on Grandview. So that's going to negate the good run there by Grandview. And there is, there are two injured players down on the Herculaneum sideline. And it looks like it's going to be 
Looks like Wes Sullivan is injured, and there's also an injured Herculaneum Black Hat. They are both laying on the Herculaneum sideline. Looks I think, like I think that. that's I think Phillips. That's... I think it's Ian Phillips on Herculaneum, and definitely Wes Sullivan. Ian looks like more. He's having a cramping issue. Yes, yeah, Sullivan is up. He is favoring his left leg, and he is going to limp off the field. I think he got rolled up in that tackle there. Looks yeah, like they're trying to stretch him. Yeah, it, it, it does look like it's a cramping issue. It, it's uh, pretty warm and pretty muggy out here tonight. It's not your typical uh, October night. There is a light breeze, but uh, it is still, it's pretty warm and pretty muggy night, so cramping could be an issue. This is the first time we've seen it. The, fl the flag on the play for Granby was an illegal shift. Looks like they're getting him up now. He was apparently just cramped up, and Wes has made it over to the other sideline so I can take a look at him. Kind of curious as to now that both players have cleared the field. Okay, now the referees are going to bring him back out. Yeah, with the Herculaneum player on the Herculaneum sideline, you can go ahead and uh, play with him down over there. So it will be third and 11, third and a... Uh, Third and a long 10, basically, here for Grandview from their own 36-yard line. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. So Billingsley, excuse me, in the shotgun. Michael Winzelberger, the lone running back. To his right, takes the snap. Billingsley rolling to his right, gets a block. Now he's going to pull it down and run. Stiff arm, nice tackle made by number two, Christian Jackson. Made a great solo tackle out in space. Got out there and got him by that left ankle. He he almost got that corner on him, but Christian got him just by that trail ankle and brought him down. That will bring up fourth down for Grandview, and that will bring out the Eagle punt team. They will send back Tristan Duncan back to receive the punt. Actually, looks like Byers is going to go back and receive it deep, and Tristan Duncan is going to come up and play coverage. Wide formation for Grandview. They put out that one man, basically only one man is down. That's the that's the uh, snapper. Six other guys on the line. They're standing up, and then three men in the backfield. Bunt is away, bounces at the 40, and will take a good Grandview roll. This is a good 15-year-old uh, roll for the Eagles, and it will be down by Grandview at the Herculaneum 20. 28 to 12 is the lead for Herculaneum here. 11:03 to go in the contest. There's so a lot what, of pressure been, on that punt. This has been a different Herculaneum team here in the second half. It really has. He must have given them the Newt Rockney at halftime, babe. He's got them all fired up. Well, I mean, Dustin Johnson went great. 133 yards on six rushes in the second half. And apparently they found Billy Duncan. <laughs> I want his doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and, he still, and he does still have a knee brace on. On his left knee, he does. He's limping a little bit, but... Yeah, he is favoring that lefty a little bit. I guess it uh, wasn't as serious as they thought. One receiver out to the right, two men in the backfield. They hand it off to Dustin Johnson, and a good ankle tackle made there. Michael Winselberger got into the backfield, grab, grabbed a hold of that right ankle, and a loss of a yard on the play. Got in there really good. That's for that quickness, that undersized defensive line. He snuck right in between the tackle and the guard on that one and got a hold of that ankle. Ball right at the 25-yard line. Need to get to the 36, second and 11. 10:35 and counting in the game. 28 to 12 is the lead for Herculaneum. Now Billy Duncan's going to split out into the slot. Four receivers out. Johnson, the lone man in the backfield. Brass under slip, under center. They flip it out to Johnson on the right side. Cuts to the sideline. He's got, he's at the 30 and he'll be brought down. That is number 21, Sam Smith, on the tackle. He picked up about three, but Grandview did the right thing there. They got about three converging on Dustin Johnson on that one. That's what you need to do with Dustin. You need three guys beating at him at one time. Good carry, about seven yards on the play. And it will be third down and five to go. Third and six right at the 32-yard line of Herculaneum. 9.47 and counting. Two to the right, two to the left. This is a new formation here for Herculaneum. Johnson, the lone man in the backfield, brass under center. Takes the snap, flips it out to Johnson, running left side. Good blocking by wide receivers, plenty of room. Picks up the first down and more to the 45. There's a flag on the far side of the field, and that is in the area of holding on one of those wide receivers out there. 
That is so difficult to do. You've got to get out there. You've got to engage. You get your pads on the guy, and you have to maintain that block for such a long time until that running back finally gets to you and gets past you. And they're staring. there's about three sets of eyes staring right at you when you're making that block. So it will be holding on Herculaneum, and now Dustin Johnson, he's a little shaken up on the play, limping a little bit. He's reaching around and grabbing that left hamstring. He has his helmet off, and he is going to limp off the field. Not a good sign for Herculaneum, as banged up as they already are. You, could, you wouldn't want to lose Johnson. He's reaching around and grabbing that left hamstring. Doesn't look serious, but uh, they'll give him a couple plays off. He has run the ball a lot tonight. He's going to limp to the sideline. He's had the ball 18 times in his hand. That's not even counting the two or three that they've taken away from him on penalties and things like that. Herculaneum will line up. Third down and 15 to go. They're going to hand it off. This is Billy Duncan. Cuts to the left with plenty of room to run. Takes it up to about the 36-yard line. And... Herculaneum will have to bring out the punt team on fourth down. They will send out the punt team. Nice run by Billy Duncan to pick up about 12 of those yards, get them back, give the punt team a little better opportunity to pin Grandview deep here. Looks like they're just stretching him out. He may just have a hip pointer, Dustin Johnson, the way they're stretching. We owe you a legal ID here in a second. We'll give it to you after the punt here by Herculaneum. It is fourth down, four to go. Back to receive the punt for Grandview is Cody Ramsey. The punt is away, almost blocked. A spiral punt bounces at the 40. Great bounce for Herculaneum. And Cody Ramsey's going to touch it. And now Sam Smith picks it up. He's going to run around to the other side of the field. Takes it. He's got plenty of room to run. Gets a block to the 40-yard line. He's going to be brought down at the 45. Not what you wanted to do for Grandview, but it ended up working out. We owe you a legal ID. This is high school football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. The talk of Jefferson County, Straight Talk, AM 1400 KJFF, Festus Crystal City, Imperial DeSoto. Grandview will take over after the punt by Herculaneum and the, uh, oh, I'll tell you what, that might be just be a lucky return, but a good uh, heads-up play there by Sam Smith. The ball yeah. bounces about four times, and then Cody Ramsey decides to try to field it. I guarantee you the coach was over there about to lose his mind, and they turn it into a real positive. Two to the right, two to the left, and Wenzelberger is split out to the left side, not standing up as a wide receiver. Billingsley going to roll to his left, room to run. Now he tries to flip it. He's going to be sacked, but there is a flag on the play. Flag on the play as Billingsley is brought down. Thought about flipping it, but uh, made a wise move to hold it on. <clears throat> and they are talking to Herculaneum here. The referees are, so this is going to back up Grandview, whatever this penalty is. Looked like that was an option pass there, too, or the option run. He had, he had both ways to go there, but Herculaneum did a good job of getting into the backfield and forcing him back towards the line of scrimmage. Holding on Grandview. That is going to back them up 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Looks like that will back them up to the 31-yard line of Grandview. That is, and that that penalty took play behind the line of scrimmage. That there, right now, you're looking at 10, 20, 15, 20, excuse me, 20 first, excuse me, first and 25 <laughs> to go for Grandview. Twins to the right and left. Billingsley in the shotgun. Winslowberger next. They're going to throw him to the right side, and the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. He was trying to throw over to the right side to Cody Vargo, but it was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Juan Brass jumped up there and got a hand on that ball to disrupt that pass play. Herculane is switching up some of their defensive linemen for a couple of, uh, looks like, younger guys maybe in the interior right now. A little bit smaller. Maybe they're trying to change things up. A little different stunts or a little different look. Second and 24 for uh, Grandview. 7.42 remaining here in the game. 28-12, to 12, the lead for Herculaneum. Two to the right, two to the left. Billingsley in the gun. Wenzelberger to his right. Billingsley run on the wrong way, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Cody Ramsey. He was running some kind of strange route. It looks like he dropped back and then was trying to circle back and just threw it at his feet. It almost looked like some sort of delayed screen they were trying to set up. Probably a good call, though, when you've got two new interior defensive linemen. They're all hyped up and fired up to go get, get the quarterback, and they just took off. The play was there. Unfortunately, the pass was a little 
But Jaquan Brass read it well, and he was trying to get in there and disrupt uh, the catch, the uh, receiver. Third down and 24 for Grandview. 7.41, clock is stopped. 28-12, the lead for Herkey. Two to the right, two to the left. Same formation here for Grandview. Snap is back. Billingsley looking to throw to the right, and he's going to be hit, and he's going to be sacked. Brought down by Herculaneum. Number 62, Devin Foot, and also 15, Shaquan Brass, in on the sack for Herculaneum, and that's going to force Grandview to bring out the punt team. Coach Fifth. Cook has taken Devin Foot and moved him out to like an outside linebacker position or a, a defensive tackle, and he's got him standing up. He just took off after the snap of the ball and just barreled over a couple of players. 56-3 is the lead for Kirkwood on top of Sexman. 10-25 to go in the fourth quarter. There is a uh, black cat back. There. That's Treston Byers. He had to take a timeout to tie his shoe. <laughs> now he's trying to he, – I think he's trying to get off the field because there's something wrong with his shoe, and now the uh, referee is going to give him a chance to get off the field. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They need another black hat out on the field. And now Dustin Johnson's going to go back there. And field, field the punt back with Tristan Duncan. They are both back there. So the uh, punt formation for Grandview. Now we get another substitution for Herculaneum. Devin Foote's holding the back of his left leg, too. I don't know if he pulled something or he's just cramping up a little bit, too, in this heat or this humidity. They are uh, adjusting the uh, clock here. At Dugan Memorial Field here at Herculaneum, a great press box. I'll tell you what, this is one of the best press boxes, I would say, in the county. They don't got many like this. Big, tall press box. We're way up here. They've done a great job remodeling this whole stadium, maintaining some of the old character, putting in the new. It's, it, it's a very nice, very nice facility. There's the punt. It will bounce at the 45, and Grandview will down it at the 42. And so that's where Herculaneum will start their next drive. Set. Go ahead. One of the few schools that still have the grass field, too. It's kind of neat to see football on grass still. Yeah, I believe uh, St. Pius, Northwest, and Herculaneum here are the only schools in Jefferson County that still have a, a grass field. With Seckman and Fox going to field turf uh, in the offseason, uh, these Herculaneum, St. Pius, and Northwest, they are the only three Jefferson County schools with uh, traditional grass still. <clears throat> Be interesting. Devin Foote looks like he's okay. He's up and moving around. He's talking to him. He may probably just cramping up a little bit with this humidity. First and ten Herculaneum from their own 42. Seven minutes to go in the game. Lead by 28 to 12. There's Johnson up the middle. Falls forward. Still continuing to go. He picks up the first down. Good run there by Dustin Johnson. He's the type of runner you think the, the play is over, and he still get, he keeps going for five more yards. He it picks looked, up the first down. It looked like the referees were ready to step in and blow it dead. Next thing you know, he's picking up another six. Up to the 45-yard line of Grandview into, into the Eagle territory, first and ten there. 6.53 and counting. Herculaneum continues to keep the ball on the ground. Trying to just run this one out up 28 to 12. Brass under center, going to hand it off to Johnson, cuts up the middle, avoids a tackler, and ball dive forward again. He was he had two guys on him, and he dove forward for an extra yard to pick up the first down. He is an impressive young man. I think of all, both the games that we've actually done, I think I've made to see him lose yardage one time and maybe get knocked backwards one time. He always continues to go forward, keeps that momentum going, keeps those pads going forward, and just takes people with him. He comes off the field for a play, gets a high five on his head coach, David Cook. Cook has shed the uh, baseball hat, probably pretty warm down there. One receiver to the right, two men in the backfield, two tight ends out for Herculaneum here with the ball at the Grandview 35. Fake the handoff to Duncan, now it's Church up the middle. Big run, spins off another tackle, two spin moves past the 20. Huge run there by Josh Church. He made two spin moves to keep going, and he picks up the first down. Grandview did a great job of getting into the back to try to disrupt that play. They really put a hit on Shaquan Brass on that play. Josh Church just took it away from him on there and just did able to work himself after that. Shaquan Brass is uh, limping a little bit, but he's jogging back to the huddle. Looks like he's jogging okay, but when he walks, he has a little bit of a limp. He took a hard hit on that play and still delivered. He got that pass off to Josh. He was slow getting up. First and 10 Herculaneum from the Grandview 16. 
Brass, the handoff to Church, running left side. The ball gets loose, and Grandview comes away with it at the 40 there at the 50-yard line. That's Cody Vargo, I believe, with it. He's, he's going all the way. Touchdown, number 21, Sam Smith, on the return for Grandview. And Shaquan Brass back at the 39-yard line. He is bent over at his waist. A huge fumble return for a touchdown there by Sam Smith. Picked the ball up to the ground. There it is again. First half was all about the fumble. The fumble came out and it's appeared in the second half again. 85-yard return out of nowhere. That was just a great pickup. He was 15 yards ahead of him before Herculaneum even realized what had happened. He, you're absolutely right. He was 15 yards down the field before Herculaneum realized that uh, he had the ball. So a fumble return by Sam Smith for 79 yards. That makes it 28 to 18. Grandview will go for two here and try and make it a one-score game if they can convert the two-point conversion. They will move the ball to the left hash. 5.22 remaining, down currently by 10 after the touchdown. Two receivers to the left and one to the right. Billingsley is going to go into the shotgun. I think we're going to get a timeout here by Grandview to talk about this. No, it's going to call a timeout by Herculaneum. We'll be back. After this timeout, you're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Hi, I'm John Popel with Twin City Toyota. In August, Toyota had its biggest month in five years and is the top retail brand for the sixth straight month. Leading the pack is the number one selling car made in America, the Toyota Camry. Great new styling inside and out on the new 2014 Corolla and compact SUV RAV4 blow away the competition. Come in today to see why these new models are flying off dealer lots. That's Twin City Toyota in Herculaneum or TwinCityToyota.com. Grandview about to attempt the two-point conversion after the 79-yard fumble return for a touchdown by Sam Smith. 5.22 to go here in the game. Grandview down by 10. And they will attempt a two-point conversion if they can convert this to a one-score game should they be able to get a touchdown and another two-point conversion. That's the first time in this game where we've had a turnover like that where one of the teams was able to capitalize and put points on the board off of it. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Billingsley in the shotgun, going to take it himself, and he is going to be dropped. Got it up to maybe the line of scrimmage, but... He is not going to get the first down. So we will be back. We'll take another 30-second timeout on this change of possession. We'll be back. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. The Medicine Shop, with locations in Festus and Peebley, is committed to providing the residents of Jefferson County with much more than just prescription refills, like free local delivery, automatic refills and reminders, diabetic and medical equipment, and the personal service that you deserve, just to name a few. That's the Medicine Shop Pharmacies. Across from the post office in Festus and on Commercial Boulevard in Peebley, caring beyond prescription. Five twenty-two remaining here in the contest. 28 to 18 is the lead for Herculaneum after the uh, fumble return for a touchdown by Grandview. Let's get a couple of score updates for you. Festus leads North County 38 to 14. Cape Central all over Farmington 59 to 14. Uh, Jefferson R7, they lost to Valley Catholic. The final there, Valley Catholic wins 56-8. to uh, Central defeats Potosi 34 to nothing. St. Genevieve all over Perryville 60 to nothing. Uh, Hillsborough, it's the final there. They defeated Windsor 60 to nothing. Fredericktown on top of Maple with 22 to 12 in the fourth quarter. St. Vincent leads Crystal City 19 to 12. That's the Crystal City homecoming there. Uh, Poplar Bluff leads Northwest 7 to nothing. And uh, St. Pius leads 50 to 6 on top of Cuba. That is in the fourth quarter. That scores from around the area. Grandview getting set to kick it away. Tristan Byers and Tristan Duncan back to receive it. It's going to be an onside kick for Grandview. And it's going to be grabbed by Herculaneum and run the other way. Grandview had to hold up on it because it was uh, slow developing. Took a second to go 10 yards. And as soon as it uh, got to that 10, Herculaneum grabbed it and they even returned it. That was Billy Duncan, actually, on the return. So Herculaneum will start in grade field possession at the Grandview 40-yard line. Normally on a play like that on the onside kick, if you can't field the ball because it hasn't gone 10 yet, they tell you to step across and really put a hit on the, on the guys up front, the hands team. 
to try to give one of the other guys the opportunity to field the ball, but Billy was standing all the way to the outside, and they got, forgot to account for him. First and 10, Herculaneum at the Grandview 45, 18 remaining in the game, 28 to 20 is the lead for Herculaneum. They hand it off. This is Johnson up the middle, cuts to the left side with room to run to the 20, to the sideline, into the end zone. Touchdown. First play of the drive. Dustin Johnson takes it in from 40 yards out. You talk about a little guy with big play capabilities. That's Dustin Johnson. Another touchdown for Johnson. That is his fourth touchdown run of the game. He was through that line before Grandview even knew what hit him. He is really, Herculaneum has found something on that left side whether it be their offensive line or some sort of weakness they found that they can exploit by Grandview. All three of his big runs have come on the left side this half. So on to the attempt, the extra point for Herculaneum is Ali Hassan. Grandview trying to get the crowd to make some noise. The snap is back. The kick is up, and it is good. One, No, no good. Whoa, I missed it. I guess it missed... Uh, Wide to one side, so the extra point is no good. 34 to 18, the lead here for Herculaneum. We'll take a quick time out. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Think you're ready for retirement? Get answers on topics like Social Security, the rising cost of health care, investing for retirement income, and 401k rollover options. The Festus Crystal City branch of Wells Fargo Advisors is hosting a workshop on Saturday, October 26th, and you won't want to miss it if you plan to retire soon. Enjoy complimentary lunch and hear secret service tips on protecting yourself from identity theft. Reservations required at 636-931-1900. Don't miss this workshop. Wells Fargo Advisors, LLC, member SIPC. Hey, we want to thank all of our sponsors and sponsors every the Jefferson County Plaza Tire Service, Medicine Shop Pharmacy, Roberts, Wooten, and Zimmer. Mercy Hospital Jefferson and Twin City Toyota in Herculaneum, also McFarland Travel in Festus. Her Herculaneum set to kick it off here, 5.09 remaining. They lead it 34 to 18. Hassan will boot it deep. Good kick here. They'll move Ramsey back to his own 15 and reserve it to the right side. Cut, try to cut to the sideline. Gets through the line. He'll be brought down. They spin him around, and he is wrapped up just past the 30-yard line where Grandview will take over on another possession. That was a nice return. He fought really hard for every yard he got there. He's playing hard still. He doesn't. He's not looking at the scoreboard. So Grandview will start this drive. First and 10 from their own 32-yard line. 4.59 remaining in the game. And Herculaneum leading 34-18. to 18. First and 10, Grandview. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Billingsley in the shotgun. Now Wes Sullivan was in the backfield. He is going to limp over into the left slot. He is uh, not at 100% right now. They're going to Billingsley going to look to the left, and he's going to hit a man. That's Sam Smith wide open. Breaks through the tackle into Herculaneum territory at the 45-yard line. A nice run, nice throw there, and reception by Sam Smith. And now we get late flags. Two of them come out at the same time back behind the play. And now Grandview is walking backwards. I think we have some unsportsmanlike conduct afterward, after the play. Dead ball foul, personal foul on Grandview. Boy, that will just kill a team after a great play. Great, uh, great so throw and a nice run. 15 yards. It's going to back them up to the 40-yard line. So after a great, um, great play there by Grandview, they're backed up 15 yards. So it will be now second... So it's going to be a personal foul on Grandview. It's unfortunate to see that because Grandview, even though they're a very young team, they've stayed composed tonight for the most part. When Herculaneum would get a score, they'd come back out and try to do their job, and they do a good job of keeping things under control. They came right back from this last score. Very nice play for, for about 20 yards. Sam Smith's first catch, and then they have another untimely penalty. That was after the play, so they gave him the first down and then backed him up to the 40. So it's first and 10 from the Grandview 40. Billingsley looking over the middle, and it's incomplete right through the hands of the tight end, Matt Pekarik. That's the first time we've mentioned him tonight, first time he's been targeted. Ball went right through his hands. He knew he had a chance at a play at that, and he puts his hands on his head. And he is going to head off the field. He'll get a substitution here as number 20, Keith Roy, comes into the game for the Eagles. 
he is really frustrated with himself. That's the first time they've thrown to him tonight, the first time we've ever called his number, and it went right through those fingers. 4.30 remaining in the game here. 34-18 is the lead for Herculaneum on top of Grandview. First and 10 Eagles, two receivers to the right, two to the left. Billingsley in the shotgun. Wenzelberger, now he shifts over to Billingsley's right, takes a snap, drops back, looking left, going to throw it over the middle and it's incomplete. It was off of Ramsey's hands. Might have been tipped by Herculaneum as well. And it falls incomplete. That'll bring up second and ten. Clock stops the clock at 425. I think Zach Sackett got in there. Sean Hudson got a fingertip on that ball. Uh, if he's, I think he's playing for Nico Brown, isn't he, tonight? He's, we've called his name a couple of times tonight. Billy Duncan uh, in, in the game on defense now for Herculaneum. Limping around with that brace on his left knee. Just checking over my stat sheet here. Dustin Johnson, I've got him for 10 rushes, 200 yards, and three touchdowns in the second half. That's just the second half. Just the second half. Grandview did a good job on him in the first half. Third down at 10, Grandview Eagles, and I think we're going to get a timeout called here by Grandview. Mike Ginge, a little bit of frustration there. He comes out onto the field. So we'll take a 30-second timeout as well here on KJFF. You're listening to high school football on KJFF and KJF Web Team. Since 1974, Calm Tree has helped people suffering from alcohol and other drug abuse. Calm Tree remains committed to its mission to be an innovative, effective, and responsive community mental health center for Jefferson County. At Calm Tree, they believe in the importance of addressing issues of concern through direct patient care prevention and educational efforts. Professional care is available to you at Calm Tree with adult and adolescent programs, inpatient care, and three outpatient and aftercare locations. Call 931-2700. We want to thank a couple of our sponsors here at Herculaneum High School, 425 remaining in the game. The Black Cats lead Grandview 34-18 to as we're here in the fourth quarter. The Lowry Law Firm in Hillsborough, Comptree of Festus, YMCA of Jefferson County, Plaza Tire Service of Festus, and the law offices of Roberts, Wooten, and Zimmer. Also Farm Bureau agent Joe Reed in Festus. Third down and 10 for Grandview from their own 40-yard line. Three receivers out to the left, one receiver to the, excuse me, three receivers to the right, one to the left. Lingsley in the gun, looking to the throw it to the right. Now he steps up, pocket collapsing, and he's going to be brought down and sacked. That is Shaquan Brass comes in and pumps up the crowd a little bit. And a big sack there for Herculaneum. You know, we can't see the crowd here. We're so far high up and very close to the field. Hard to tell the crowd, but uh, we were down at halftime. And a great crowd here on hand. It is full up here at Herculaneum High School. That was a nice job. Quarterback against quarterback on that play, and Shaquan Brass won that, won that battle. We get a final from Union. The Union defeats DeSoto 46-6. to Fourth down. They're going to go for it here for Grandview. Billingsley dropping back to pass. Going to throw it over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Ramsey again, but the throw was a little low. Ramsey couldn't pick it up, and so that is going to be a turnover on down on Grandview, and Herculaneum will get it three 40 to go, and they lead it 34-18. That's an interesting screen that they're trying to run. If they could complete that pass, it could get really interesting downfield. They had six people down against three for Herculaneum. They had it set up very nicely, but they just couldn't make the connection. So first and 10, Herculaneum. They have the ball at the Grandview 35-yard line. Shaquan Brass jogs out onto the field. Josh Church along with him. And they will break the huddle. 340 remaining here in the contest. Out on the field right now, Josh Church and Billy Duncan in the backfield for Herculaneum. Tristan Duncan, one receiver split out ride to the right and two tight ends. Brass takes the snap, hands it off to Duncan with plenty of room to the left side. Room to run to the first down and more up to the 20-yard line. A big pickup there by Billy Duncan. Billy picking up 18 on that play, and he did the very smart thing there. When he got over to that that sideline, he immediately turned back in to make sure he stayed inbounds, and that clock keeps running. Heads up, smart play by Billy there. And now Duncan is going to limp off the field and favoring that left knee again. We thought he was injured and out for the season coming into this game, and he is going to limp off the field. Had a couple of very nice runs. Now Dustin Johnson will come back into the game for Herky. First and 10, Black Cats from the Grandview, 16. One receiver out to the right, that's 
That is dunk in there. Up the middle is the run. Not much going on. Josh Turtz with the carry. Picks up a couple. Billy Duncan with the injury came. He shows up in the second half, and on five rushes, he's right at 100 yards. He's run very effectively. He's made the most of his opportunities. Second and six coming up here after the four-yard pickup by Josh Church. Shaquan Brass jogs back on the huddle. A little bit of limp. Tristan Duncan split out wide to the right. Same formation here for Herculaneum. Two tight ends, two men in the backfield. Duncan to the left. Excuse me, Church to the left. Johnson to the right. Brass is under center. Grandview pack in the box here. And so does Herculaneum. They hand it off to Church. Cuts to the left side. Big hole, and he's going to be brought down just near the first down. And they will spot. They will give him a good spot here, and he will pick up the first down. And that's going to be inside the 10. Might even be inside the 5. Another first down for Herculaneum with 2.15 to go. This is exactly what they do. They're just keeping the clock moving. They're going to pound it out on the ground. I'm sure Coach Cook, he doesn't mind if they score or not. Just run this clock out and take this homecoming victory. First down and goal for Herculaneum from the Grandview four-yard line. Same formation here. Tristan Duncan split out to the right. Church and Johnson in the backfield. Brass under center. Surveying the defense. Now we... He goes under center, barks out the signals, handed off to Church, cuts to the left, huge hole, walks into the end zone, touchdown. Josh Church walks into the end zone from four yards out, had a huge hole on the left side, and Herculaneum extends their lead. They are now up 40-18 to 18 with the extra point upcoming. you got to give a lot of credit to this left side of the offensive line. They've done a phenomenal job for all the running backs of this Herculaneum team. Great holes. He didn't even get touched on that play. He made a small cut to the left and went, walked in. Kick is up, and it is no good. Wide to the right, the second missed extra point of the night for Herculaneum. We'll take a minute timeout. Thirty-four to, excuse me, forty to eighteen is the lead for Herculaneum. You listen to high school football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Everyone's talking about junk in the trunk flea market on Highway 67 south of Festus. Friday is a garage sale day and spaces are just $10. Every Saturday and Sunday beginning at 7 a.m. there are acres and acres of flea market items. Vendor spaces are just $15. And the pumpkin patch now open, so bring the kids. They'll just love it. And bring your appetite for great food like burgers, kettle corn, and more. Call junk in the trunk flea market at 636-209-3811. That's 209-3811 for junk in the trunk flea market, Highway 67 south of Festus. We're back here at Herculaneum High School. I'm Tommy Self alongside Eric Oberly. The kickoff is upcoming for Herculaneum High School. As they are up 40 to 18 on top of the Grandview Eagles. Ali Hassan out to place it in the middle of the field. Then he is about to boot it away. 154 remaining in this game. It has been a very impressive, been a very impressive uh Second half here for Herculaneum. Hassan getting ready to boot it away. And it is a good kick right up the middle. And it bounces off the chest of Grandview. And they're going to fall down. I believe that's Wenzelberger. Wenzelberger falls down after the, uh, excuse me, actually that wasn't Wenzelberger. That was uh, Josh Craig. And so Grandview will take over. 152 to go in the game. Ball at their own 22-yard line. See what Grandview does here. I'm sure they're not going to give up. They're going to keep going at it and try to do something here and, and come away from this and end at least on a positive note with the score of 40 to 18. First and 10. Grandview from their own 22 yard line, 152 to go. Two to the right, two to the left. Billingsley in the gun. Sullivan to his right. Actually, I believe that's Wenzelberger. Nope, that is Sullivan. Billingsley going to throw it and it's over the middle to Ramsey and he has the catch for the first down and more up to the 35. Tell you what, Billingsley and Ramsey. They work pretty good together. Another good catch there by Ramsey. Yes, they do. Billingsley's got a very nice arm, very accurate. Not a real hard throw, but very, very accurate. He's put it right under his arm. And Ramsey is about, he's accounted for about 80, I think 75 or 80 percent of all the yards on the passing game. Ramsey's passing game has been one of the more impressive passing scenes I've seen from the high schools in this area. Ramsey moves the chains, 130 and counting here in the fourth and final quarter. 40 to 18 is the lead for Herculaneum. Ball right at the Grandview 35. Two to the left, two to the right. 
Billingsley dropping back to pass, looking left. He's going to be hit and brought down and sacked by number 35, Frank Maxwell of Herculaneum. Another sack for Herculaneum. That's going to back them up, and that's going to continue to roll the clock. And it will be under a minute to go, minutes to go right now. Frank and Maxwell, counting. another new name. He just blew through that line on that one. Second and 18 coming up here for Grandview from their own 23-yard line. Excuse me, 28-yard line. Two to the right, two to the left. The shotgun. Sullivan going back. It's over the middle. It's Ramsey, and he's going to cut through the middle. Nice catch there, and running up the middle to the original line of scrimmage up to the 40. Another nice catch and run after by by Cody Ramsey. He gets a lot of uh, yards after the catch. Yes, he does. They do a good job of uh, designing the pass plays where he's coming in on those seams, but he's not afraid to go across the middle where you normally get hit pretty hard. He does a good job of turning up and then trying to get around the backside of the linebacker. So that'll make it third and four, Grandview, from the 41. Need to get to the 45 with four seconds remaining. Will they get this play off? They just barely get it off. This will be the final play of the game. Billy Z dropping back to pass. So I can bake down, and that will do it as he is sacked by number 70, 72, Josh Miles. And that is going to do it for this ball game. Herculaneum wins 40 to 18. A great second half there by the Herculaneum Black Cats. They get their first conference win, and they will move to two and four. It was good to see Tyler Billings get back up. He got tackled and really got bound up in an odd position. He went down very strange. He well, let's, there. Go ahead, yeah, well, let's go ahead and uh, quickly wrap this up, up this uh, game. We'll join you in another game here in a minute, but uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Um, just a fantastic uh, performance, especially in the second half by uh, Her Herculaneum. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it was really – they really came out in the second half uh, in flying. They absolutely did. I don't know what what, uh, what changes Coach Cook made, but they were really fired up, and they really attacked to the left side. They found something there that they could make work. Second half, I have Dustin Johnson, 10 carries, 200 yards, and the injured Billy Church comes in, five carries. He racks off 100 yards. Dustin Johnson had three touchdowns. Then you have Josh Church coming in. He's running the ball in the second half. A couple of more touchdowns by him that left side they found something that they could make work 40 to 18 the final here from herculaneum well a big conference game is going on the mafc red festus is at north county and we were going to send it to you right now on j98 i'm tommy self thank you for listening to kjff and now to j98 for region on regional radio